<laughs> vascular is in you, dude. Like it's fucking tight, dude. That's the best compliment yeah, I've ever it's, got. It's in there, it's dude. So like, specific. The, the 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 dick skin everywhere. Like I wish I had it, dude. Like, <laughs> I swear to God, I'm working on it. Okay. listening all right ladies and gentlemen welcome back to another episode of the so selfish podcast i'm your host steven and today we have a very special guest mr mario rodriguez welcome to the show dude thanks man i appreciate you well fuck that was a hell of an intro <laughs> <laughs> um I talk way too much. I'm so sorry, man. No, that's God, okay, dude. Damn it. That um, dude, podcasts are are invented because of that. Yeah, it's a long yeah. conversation forum, and that's I, I, never I been talk on a lot. Before. Never, never been on this before. So, I never... oh, this is the first time you're doing something like this. Yeah, yeah, oh, first time. This is dope. Fuck yeah, super dope. So, so today, ladies and gentlemen, we're gonna get to know who Mario actually is, and I'm excited. You know, judging a book by its cover is one thing, but there's so much more in this man's head and i'm so excited to uh, dive in and, and really elaborate and and explore a lot of dimensions that make him the artist who he is and uh we can all learn from this this episode is very important because uh we're going to be covering a lot of topics that i think we all uh you all need to hear and or be reminded of and oh, i'm just creamy <laughs> Buddy, it's super fucking serious, man. Oh man, but oh. yeah, we're we're excited. Uh, so, Mr. Mario is a tattoo artist. He's mm -hmm. well, uh, very known in town, and in downtown Winter Haven, or just in Winter Haven, Polk County in general. You must encounter uh, just from tattooing in general. You are with someone, a client for many hours, and just a collection of other clients, and you have these conversations with. The people in front of you and you must gain a lot of just perspective and stories and real shit talk and i'm just wondering like from all of this experience that you've had you know do you kind of uh uh discover some patterns amongst people uh by having like these close conversations because getting tattoos is very intimate and i don't know and i can ask you this question before you get into that sure yeah. is it do tattoo artists talk to the person like uh to spark conversation to distract them from the pain is that something because I, I feel like they uh, do it intentional sometimes but i it could just be in my head okay um so pattern wise um i feel like i feel like the number one when i deal with clients i look for body language for sure it's weird when i especially in consultations um i used to just at first just be like you know let me just get my fucking money and get the get get them out of here. You know what I'm saying? But now I'm like very picky and I want to see if I can, you know, vibe with this person and mm. make sure it's 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 a, it's a good fit for a for a long session for sure. I mean, the little bangers and stuff like that. It's it's all good. You know, it is what it is. But um, I mean, what's what's crazy is everyone does have a consistent pattern and behavior with tattoos, which is fear. <laughs> yeah. Fear is like, it's so crazy, man, like how people can just work themselves to a point where they just, nothing matters outside of a tattoo shop when you get there. It's weird. You're, you enter into a whole nother world and it's crazy because I wake up at 6 a.m., I do my thing, I get to the shop around 9 a.m. or so and I, it's just another day for me, you know what I'm saying? It's, right. it's just, it's my, it's my second home, you know what I'm saying? For so sure. I, and it's crazy when other people come in that aren't used to, you know, obviously working there or being an artist, period. It's, it's a whole nother ball game, you know what I'm saying? And it, it's, it's weird. It's like seeing how like sausage is made, man. Like you're just like, <laughs> dude, it's not a big deal. But people come in and they're like, fuck dude like you can just see it on their face they're just so preoccupied with whatever is to come with the tattoo oh, session you know I what i'm see. saying yeah yeah that's like their main motive that's their main focus like you can you can start conversation with someone and 
you can tell either they're into it and they're starting to get relaxed um, or they're just like, dude, yeah, whatever you're saying is going in one ear and out the other because I'm in <laughs> fucking pain. I'm freaking out. I don't like this at all. Like, get the fuck off me. It's crazy. So, um, wow. yeah, I notice. Like, Do you encounter more of that? Like the, the, the fear, fear, like, you know, just get get over this and and uh, I just want to get over it. I want to get over the whole tattoo and then just keep going. Or do you get more people that get into the comfort zone and it's um it's hit or miss like you know it's crazy because longer tattoo sessions i never get anyone that's uncomfortable or i want to get this over with i think it's because they buckle themselves in they know what they're getting themselves into and they're like yep this is it this is my life for the next seven hours i'm fucked so (laughs) um not really you're not you're not (laughs) fucked like that, let's talk about this stigma. That's another thing, too, uh, in conversation. You know what I'm saying? I always ask when I start a conversation with a client, I always tell them, you know, um, have you got any tattoos before? Can I see them? Check them out. You know what I'm saying? I can immediately tell now if, you know, the artist was heavy handed or not or if they knew what mm. they were doing. And then I ask, you know, all right, so how was your experience with tattoos? And then if they tell me, oh, it was fucking terrible, dude. Like, I'm not really looking forward to this at all. And that's when I can kind of read their body language and mix in their past experiences based upon their previous work and tell them hey listen um you're not going to go through that again uh it's it's a lot different um and it's because you're working with someone who knows what the fuck they're doing and who's been taught to know what the fuck to do properly you know what i'm saying i will say you know i didn't i didn't just come up with the shit on my on my on my own I, i i worked for it and and i was taught by appropriate you know, people and um, the people that I work with now are, are really good teachers and tell me, you know, the do's and don'ts. And that's the number one thing too. clients always are. They're like, shit, you know, I'm going into this freaking the fuck out because my friend and my brother and my sister and my nephew <laughs> yeah. all told me that this is going to suck ass. And the thing is, though, they probably told you because they either had a heavy handed artist or a shit artist or they had a shit experience. You know what I'm saying? Right. It could have been with a phenomenal artist. It doesn't matter. But um, that's the one thing it's I hate. Personal. It. Yeah. It's when they when, when they when they do like the the Internet browsing and like just kind of the <laughs> Internet diagnosing and the um gossip diagnosing you know like oh you're, you're about to get that done over there oh that shit's about to suck bro and then they get so worked up and then they they get freaked out panic pass out do some crazy shit and then i gotta <laughs> deal with it and i tattoo them and they're like wow this is this doesn't really suck as bad right, you know right. what i'm saying it sucks for a moment but you know my my goal is to get you in and out and um make it as pleasurable as possible because i want you to come back come back that's that's the goal we want you to come back so you're now listening to questions with mario i'm gonna cat um dude okay real quick can i like throw a curveball at you yeah yeah because i want to get to know you like real fast you know what i'm saying don't think about the answers just like we're gonna bullet these so i'm gonna ask you questions (laughs) these are and these are super super important questions by the way like these are do or die so no pressure make sure you answer them to the best of your ability but these are like life or death questions Mm. um they they they're pretty they're pretty intense and um but i need you to do your best to just take this seriously okay no seriously okay yeah okay cool chicken or beef Hmm. yeah you gotta answer way faster than that okay cool okay all right all right my man nice okay (laughs) all right cool beef claritin or benadryl benadryl Oh, shit. Are you an allergy dude, bro? Yeah, a little bit. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Hey, in Puerto Rico, I, real quick, I, I got yeah. uh, I drank a coconut. Yeah. Uh, I lived there for a couple of years. Are you allergic to coconuts? <laughs> well, I drank a life, uh, a coconut, a fresh one, and I drank the water. Oh. And after that day, I, I, I've never been allergic to anything. But after that day, my, my throat swelled up, and I developed all these allergies. 
And then oh. little by little, I've been microdosing with some with hot water, animals, and then nuts you might to have, get myself back in rotation. Uh, yeah, that rotation. sounds like hepatitis C or something. I don't know. Dude, you <laughs> might... No, it definitely uh, stemmed from that fucking coconut ooh, thing. Okay, but, yeah, yeah. Puerto Rico's wild, bro. I went to Puerto Rico once. All right, we'll talk about it later. Listen. <laughs> All right. My dude's an allergy guy. Benadryl, sweet. Um, beef, Benadryl. Marvel or DC heroes? Marvel. Okay, Marvel or DC villains? Oh, I like that. Uh, DC. Dude, hell yeah. Okay, fuck yeah. We're just yeah, we're we're twins so far. Okay. Favorite <laughs> anime. Um if you have one, like if you yeah, if yeah. you're into it. I think Bleach. Bleach? Yeah. Okay, cool, cuz I've been asking everyone about their favorite anime because I haven't watched a single anime yet. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Uh, have Bro, you done like Yu-Gi-Oh at all? I'm like well, surface level ones. In the, yeah, surface level. Like that's about it. But like surface level everything. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> um, I love doing anime tattoos because I respect the 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 technicality of it. Oh, it's yeah. fucking phenomenal. That's, just, that must be a lot of line work, right? Dude, it sends chills up my fucking spine, dude. Wow. It's fucking great. It's great. Um. I, I love it. I love it so much. It's so intense and like just the 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 detail and then also the accuracy. You have to be accurate oh, with these absolutely. things. You know what I'm saying? For sure. But you fuck some shit up, bro. Everybody fuck notices. Fuck hell yeah. One time I'm not gonna. S- Should I say this? Fuck. I'm. You don't even notice, so it's okay. Whoever <laughs> you are, but I flipped uh, Sasuke's. Uh, little emblem on his uh, headband one time way early in my apprenticeship and like i Whoa. went yeah it was crazy as fuck but like i actually think i ended up telling that client and they were like it's okay like it's all good like there's actually this one and i think they were trying to make me feel better and it, I, it was it was wild dude like I, i've 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 anime dude i need to brush up on it it's all good like I said, I stem from all these other topics. I do this. I'm like squirrel, and then boom, I go over here, and then I go over here, and then like mom's like, "Yo, come back here," and I'm like, "Shit!" So I got to like jog back, back to this. Okay. <laughs> Favorite genre of music? Indie. Dude, what the? Yeah, fuck, dude, come on, bro. dude. All right, hell yeah, dude. I'm known in this town for indie music. Okay, dude. all right, well, dude. I'm definitely, fu- I'm vibing with you later. That's dope. <laughs> facts, That's dope. dude. Okay, hell yeah, bro. Literally, when I'm at the shop, like, by myself, like, on my days off and stuff, like, I always, I'm always working, bro. But um, when I get, like, in tune with, like, a crazy portrait or something like that, I try oh. to do it, like, on a day where no one's around. I get, like, really picky. I just, I get really crazy. But I'll talk about it later more. But uh, indie music all day when I'm just in the zone. Like, oh, yeah. Dude, yeah. it just sends Those, your... You know, indie music's, like, for deep thinkers. It is. It really is. I'm glad you said that because, like... I feel like people think I'm a poser when I say that. I'm like, dude, it makes you think. Like, <laughs> and they're like, all right, whatever, dude. Like, you listen to Pitbull for sure. <laughs> Shut up. Okay. Um, of all uh, names, dude, yeah. you said Pitbull. That guy needs to. I don't want to condone violence, but <laughs> that guy needs to go die. I don't fuck with Pitbull, bro. Like, come on, man. Come, out of we've lost a lot of amazing art. All right, that's it. I'm just going to leave it at that. But yeah, okay. All right, it gets deeper. It gets deeper. Pizza or calzone? Calzone. All right, you lost me there. I'm not going to lie. Okay, flats or drums? Mm. This is like, this is a big deal. This is a really big deal. I'm just letting you know. I'll say flats. Okay, my man. Yeah. All right, good shit, good shit. That's the only answer, by the way. <laughs> it's flats. Okay. Um, favorite... I- um, Favorite sex position? Hmm. Yeah. I, I think I like... Uh, I'm trying to look into your eyes during yeah, this one. Yeah, sure. <laughs> let's, get, let's get fucking weird, bro. Dude, it's going to get weird. Yeah, Fuck let's yeah. get weird. Um, I think I like... It's not doggy style. It, it's, it's really... It's like the... Wait. It's, it's like a side position doggy style. I don't know what the actual uh, name is, but... They're laying, but you can still see the back, and but they can face you. Oh, you know what I mean? Wait, like wait, they're wait. they're slightly tilted. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. You're kind of doing the um. It's like pandas wrestling. Like they're kind of oh, like yeah, on yeah, each yeah. other on their back, and like the girls just like looking back at you. Right. And but you're behind her. Yeah, like, yeah. Are you like on top of her, or like you're laying on your sides, like seals? Uh, like I'm. Well, I'm kind of on top. Oh. And, oh and, okay. But, 
But oh, the, you're on top and she's laying on her stomach? Yeah, yeah. But her, but the Bro. position is that I can, her legs a little bit lifted. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you can see her back. And, yeah, and, yeah. I, but and then she's, she's looking up you. at you. Yeah, she yeah. can like look up at you. And she, yeah. Bro, what the fuck? That's yeah. literally my favorite sex position. Oh, get out Bro, of here. Bro, I swear to fuck. I swear on everything. Bro, there is awesome. nothing hotter than a fucking... Dude, you're on top of the girl. I'm going to make this very short because I don't want to make anyone uncomfortable. But like I said, we're going balls to the walls here. Um, dude, when you're on top of the girl, she's laying on her stomach and like you're you're on top of her. And yeah. then she's like got her face up at you and like you're kind of looking oh, down at her. Dude. And she's just like you're talking. And, oh, like, yeah. I'm into like spitting. But you give her a little slap. Yeah, I mean, it's cool. I mean, I feel like that's overrated. Okay. But yeah. What would the spitting? Where do you spit? Where do I spit? Yeah. In their mouth. In their mouth? Okay. <laughs> yeah, bro. Like, that shit's going in your mouth. I mean, I, I, no, it's fair game. Like, you can do it to me, too. But, like, that's... We're getting fucking gross. Like, make sure you brush your teeth and ladies, mouthwash. Ladies, buckle up. Yeah, bro. Like, I got, I, I got mouthwash on deck. So, like, what's good? It's okay. Like... <laughs> She goes out to eat and comes straight to my house or something like that. If that's a vibe, then mm. mouthwash is over there. And then Man, that get sounds over. like a nice time. It, dude, honestly, it is. It's good. I'm gonna leave it at that though, because we're gonna we're gonna chill. Um, okay, <laughs> boots. It's getting on in here. Yeah, dude. yeah, it is. It is. Um, <laughs> boots or shoes? Hmm. So in New York City, I was a boot guy, like you know, fashion boots, like Steve okay. Madden, uh, Stephen Madden, nice, and nice. things like that. And hell yeah. And then you know, like the polo. Pricey. Yeah, dude, all the boots I bought in New York City, yeah. over 120 bucks mm. minimum. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah. I started buying, like, cheap, like, uh, not, oh, I guess, affordable boots, mm. like, in Puerto Rico, I think. But okay. I used to buy, like, these Ralph Lauren boots. Oof. Dude, yeah. they were, like, they started, like, at 170 mm. but I just love the style. It had yeah. nothing to do with, do with the money. Oh, yeah, I yeah. I literally found $100 in New York City one day. Yeah. And the first thing I thought about was buying another pair of those boots, dude. <laughs> That's how much boots. I like. <laughs> Fuck yeah. But Don't touch it. Boots. Okay, cool. <laughs> Hell yeah. But um, uh, um, I started to to rock like shoes, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. uh, low low shoes. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Now, now I, I rock some sneakers. Okay, I feel you. This is a you. company called uh, Echo. Okay. It's kind of, it's a European I yeah, mean, yeah. People don't fuck with this, but these are like two hundred dollars. Nah, it's tight though. Like you rock it. Like you're you're ready. I feel like you're uh you you know what you look like right now <laughs> with those shoes. You look like a professional, like like you you professionally parkour. You know what I'm saying? Like <laughs> yeah. you're just you're ready to go. Like the shorts look really like you, they're super high, free forming. You know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah. yeah, and they're just. You just look like, mm, like I'm, I'm just like the <laughs> vascular is in you, dude. Like it's fucking tight, dude. That's the best compliment yeah, I've ever got. It's in there, it's dude. So like, specific. The, the 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 dick skin everywhere. Like I wish I had it, dude. Like, <laughs> I swear to God, I'm working on it. Okay, I'm I'm working on the dick skin. I think yeah, but I just okay. Look back to what I was saying. All right, <laughs> the dick skin, <laughs> dude. I wish I had dick skin everywhere. I have shit jeans, bro. Like, thanks, mom. Thanks, dad. Kinda, dad. Dad had some pretty tight jeans. Like he, he was killing it when he was younger. Damn, dude. Yeah, like I was like, damn, he's a he's a handsome motherfucker. I'm not gonna lie. I think I have his nose, mm. which is wild because people say like I'm. That's you, like the Turkish part of me. But my, you have a dope nose, dude. You do look, I? yeah, fuck yeah, dude. I'm not gonna lie. Thank you, man. <laughs> you are I'm, I'm sometimes self conscious about my nose. Like I look at, it, I'm like, fuck this nose, dude. Like. Ah. Yeah, don't ever fix weird. that shit, dude. No, you know, like the more money I don't think I can get, afford that. But no, but trust yeah. me, dude. The more money we get in this life, yeah, I'm not gonna lie, bro. I, get... think, I think about shit like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's yeah. weird. It's weird. I am. I, I'm. I'm kind of. Um, I'm self conscious about my little pudge. I was very heavier set when I was younger. Oh wow. um, yeah, I was super heavy, dude. And then I got this like infamous post on Facebook. It's got like a couple hundred likes and. It's a it's a comparison of like how much weight I lost like pre COVID, um, before COVID I was like almost three hundred pounds. Get the fuck out I of here! I swear dude. to God, bro, we'll pull them up. Like oh, I'll put and, a photo on the on yeah, the, the video. Okay, cool, cool. Yeah, let's do that because there's like, gonna be a lot of those. Yeah, yeah Like okay, the, cool. I, I do that with all my episodes. Oh, sweet, sweet. Yeah, you're gonna see it. Um, wherever it's at, and it, it I'm it looks like I'm. I'm breathing at like two miles an hour and um, 
So I'm, dude, I'm, hold, <laughs> I'm holding a plate of chicken wings, a oh fifty plate platter of chicken wings, and I've got like a, a like long hair like you, like Whoa. super long, but it's just like dead as fuck because I I just I was poor on hygiene, and it my sh- my sides were shaved so I can show off my stupid douchebag fresh head tats, but like I look like a potato. <laughs> so it just didn't even fucking matter. No. It was so bad. And it was bad. Like, the, you see the double chin and everything, bro. Wow, and, dude. Yeah. I can't picture you 300 pounds. Whew, it was crazy. That's fucking crazy, man. Yeah, it was, it was wild. It was wild. Um, But, uh, okay. Any more questions? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's crazy how we just... Speed round. Here we yeah, go. Yeah, it's crazy. <clears throat> okay, cold pillow or cold blanket before you get in mm. bed? I, I, I can only choose one. Cold blanket. I'm very weird with like blankets. I get like full on erections. Like just if things are like too cozy. What about weight? How do you feel about weighted blankets, dog? Weighted blankets. Yeah. Like hotel. Like generally, like they they don't no. have those. No. Like you ever have you ever bought a weighted nah, blanket? Dude, I'm not big or into. Tried it? Okay. I'm not big into like uh, comforters and things like that. Okay. Weighted blankets are the shit. Like there, I bought I bought a fifty pound weighted blanket. Yeah, whoa! It's crazy, man. It's weird, dude. But, you're okay. rocking my world. I don't know. I don't know about this stuff. Oh, you don't know about no, this? No, no, bro. Um, hey, weighted blanket people, tap in in the comments. <laughs> what what weights are we working with here? Because, I mean, I got you beat fifty pounds, baby, and it's a <laughs> it's a cooling blanket too, so it gets cold. Wow, dude. Yeah, that's a fucking yeah, it's nice lit. Time. It's lit. Okay, so cold blanket. I disagree with you on that. Cold pillow. Cold pillow all day. Like, there's nothing better than an I, well, ice here, cold I, pillow. But you said you can only choose one. I prefer yeah. both. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you're, you're fucked. I don't know what to tell you. Because um, a hot pillow, dude? No, nah, no. Nah, like, I don't fuck with hot anything, dude. <laughs> <laughs> but, like, you get into bed and, like, there's a steaming hot pillow. You know? Or a cold blanket. Or uh, an ice cold pillow. Or, like, a steaming hot blanket like what are you rocking uh, with you could take that blanket off you yeah know what I'm yeah saying? i feel so, you did. i, I mean, take cold showers by the way like do you I, I, really yeah yeah holy it's shit it's great for your balls uh gentlemen if you listen is it yeah oh my god makes okay. your balls bigger does it really yeah we'll, we'll go over the scientific uh literature later but i i was allergic to the like uh the heat mm-hmm. and I was like uh, developing rashes, and that's when I started to use cold water. That's after the coconut thing. When I when I got an allergy oh, to yeah, coconut, yeah, yeah. everything just became like out of control, and I just got used to uh, showering in cold water. And I still do. I, I like wow. it. it. It like drives me in the morning. I'm up at five in the morning, so like it just gives me like that boost. Wow. Okay. All right. Yeah, I like that. That's dope. I guess you get acclimated to it after a while. You oh, know for saying? sure. Yeah. Okay. Bet. Um. All right, Dave Chappelle or Kevin Hart? Oh, Dave Chappelle. Okay, good. Thank God. I yeah, fucking on, hate dude. that guy, Kevin Hart. <laughs> I hate him. What's up, dude? Fucking come at me. All right, um, UFC or boxing? UFC. Hell yeah, my man. We talked about that before. Yeah. Hell yeah. Um, that sport is growing. Like, Wait, it's, UFC? It's yes. Oh, that, dude, that that's, sport is phenomenal. It's that's growing. the shit because the un- the unpredictability of it is just. It's really hard to bet, you yeah, know, yeah, and, yeah. and, but besides that, it's, there's so many weapons that you can use that you can be the best fighter. And we've seen this, you know, just the other day with, uh, uh, the Nigerian uh, nightmare. Um, yeah. Usman. 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 Like him getting knocked out. Like I, yeah. I th- and nobody thought that that was going to happen that no, night. No, not so. at all. Like I, I, I get like really in tune with, with UFC and watch like vlogs of uh, Adesanya and stuff like that. Oh, I follow yeah. Adesanya. Oh, I love, yeah, yeah. He's I think Adesanya has a phenomenal personality, bro. Okay. Back to... Okay, tattoos or piercings? Tattoos. I don't have any piercings. And I, I've That's never, fine. And I don't judge anybody. That's fine, I, yeah. I never... Yeah. I just never got it. I never got into it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For sure. My first tattoo, I was 12 years old. And mm. it wasn't even popular to do that. Yeah, yeah, for you sure. Know, so... I was 16 when I got my first one. Um, Where was it? It was. It was. It's on my uh, upper arm. Um, I may do a wardrobe change because this turtleneck was the worst <laughs> idea ever. My man's got a turtleneck these, on. These, I love these, this. <laughs> these lights are fucking screaming yeah. at me right now. Um, uh, but yeah, I, I have. You uh, got the tank top on. The 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 infamous tank top. 
Is this it? No. No, 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 no. I got. You have a... something underneath here? No, I don't have anything underneath this. Okay, yeah. we have we have clothes here, but do you? Oh yeah. shit, dude. Okay, hell yeah. Um, I I I wanted to give you merch too, by the way, as oh. as a gift. So just remind me. Got I'll you, give dude. you some shit. But um, thank you. Yeah, absolutely, dude. I don't even care if you don't wear it. Uh, it's just you know, just take it, do something with it. Have your son fucking i don't know do something <laughs> super manly with it i don't know something but um no but uh yeah i uh heart of the lion i got this fucking uh this lion tattoo on the upper arm outside of my arm there and uh it was, t- it was terrible 16 um i just wanted it because i was like fuck yeah i want tattoos you know what i'm saying um <laughs> But that's it. Um, and then I got into piercings later, like way, way, way later. Um, uh, what did I get first? I think it was obviously, yeah, my ears. And then after that, it was like a septum piercing. But um, and that sucks. And you don't have that now. No, nah, no, nah, I, I took it out. I just, I think it closed up. I don't know. You kind of go through phases with piercings and stuff like that. I mean, I guess that's the cool part about it. You take them out, and then you know, you don't yeah. even really notice anything. But um. Tattoo is kind of harder to get rid of, um, but yeah, I've experienced in that too. I'm like lasering off half my face right now. I don't know if you can see that. I I, I was noticing that. What yeah. what was that before? I think it I... was a a Dan Cuban. Uh, it's a tattoo machine. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. I think Yo, I remember seeing this. Actually. Quick question: Do you have snacks or oh, anything? Oh, dude, we got everything. Here. What do you have? Because I'm I didn't eat at all today. Mm, okay, I've been yeah. running errands all day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dude, so I'm, I'm like oh. starving. We're going to be here for a while. Can, do yeah, you yeah, mind yeah. if I just No, no, not snack? at all. We can take a break. Okay, what do you got? What do you got? I got some barbecue chicken. <laughs> um, I have I have candy and okay. then I have chips and uh, <laughs> <laughs> You didn't expect that. <laughs> I did not expect that at uh, all. That sounds lit, dude. And, and I have some granola too. Okay. Um, I have some trail mix and okay. nuts and things like that. Okay, um yeah, can we can we take a yeah, yeah, quick absolutely. five? We're gonna take quick? a break and we'll be back. Okay, cool. We'll be back. I need something to eat. I'm sorry. I just realized like it's setting in how long we're gonna be here, and I'm like, yeah, shit. Yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. like, I'm, 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 I'm. You want to make sure you're comfortable. Yeah, yeah. I'm, 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 I'm hungry. So real quick, sorry, I'm a fat ass. <laughs> All right, that. We'll be back, folks. Okay. Yeah, I, I fuck with that. Let me put my shit on airplane mode. <laughs> what What does the airplane mode? You know, really, what does what what does the function do, dude? I think airplane mode is like, you know, what's weird when, I swear to God, this happens every time, and this has something to do with airplane mode. It's it's weird. Um, when you talk about something with someone, like if we talk about like Doc Martens right now, I yeah. guarantee you, when we're done, you're gonna get an ad on Instagram or Facebook about Doc Martens, and it's because something's happening here. Like it's it's weird. Oh, it's you know what I'm I know, talking about. Yeah, I, I know the phone listens to us. And does it really? Yeah, yeah. Okay, I didn't want to say you know, first because that sounds really crazy. No, it's not but, a conspiracy anymore. It okay. was for a long time, but oh, it's real now. It's in like uh, terms and conditions. That shit's real. Yeah, dude. Oh, that's like hell that's no. uh. <laughs> <laughs> so what um, the fuck? And it it starts with the the commerce like uh, Amazon okay uh ebay all of these uh and google 100 percent. that's like where it all google, stems from yeah yeah google i feel like owns like 90 percent of microphones in the whole <laughs> world <laughs> you know what i'm talking about yeah for Either sure that or apple bro i feel like apple like they're like hey it's time to update your software because our microphone broke <laughs> so <laughs> all yeah. of those all of those updates there's always something about privacy yeah. uh terms yeah and, and we never read it no no and they know that yeah. and then they they'll always um it's always something additional that they add mm-hmm. like tiktok just did something like that dude i'm not downloading tiktok ever again dude fuck tiktok i think uh <laughs> am i allowed to say names and yeah, yeah, like yeah. celebrities name? okay okay yeah, yeah. like joe rogan went over the uh terms and agreement for tiktok that was fucking scary yeah like, i'm not doing that so um you, yeah you, fuck that you give a lot of permission to to these companies to use your uh yeah. inform to, to gain your information and then they yeah. can use it for whatever selling. purposes and in they that Fucking, whole selling business is fucking huge i wonder if like 
they rag your ass. Like they're like, dude, this guy's corny as fuck. Like, <laughs> like I think my TikTok videos are the shit, and they're like, oh my god, dude, this guy like, sucks. Dude, he's got no following, <laughs> yeah. dude. He's got in-house cameras. We know what he does outside of TikTok. He's a weirdo, dude. He just lays in bed with his dick out and just eats spring rolls. <laughs> and I think I'm the shit online. Hell yeah. That's not what I do at home, by the way. I eat summer rolls. Um, what's a, what's a summer roll? A summer roll is um, like a sushi. Yeah, it's kind of it's healthier than a spring roll. Um, oh, like a like an egg roll. Yeah, it's it's like it's made with like rice paper. Um, oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Like okay, so downtown Thai Haven. That's shout out Thai Haven. I go there every night. They literally know me by my full government name. It's crazy <laughs> as fuck. It's so hard to eat healthy here, bro. So I'm there every fucking night. Damn near, but yeah. Um, no, 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 because they have these healthy rolls and it's made out of like rice paper and they just stuff it with cabbage and carrots. Oh, and man, that sounds fucking awesome. It's not awesome. <laughs> it's fucking terrible. Well, but it tastes good. For, it tastes good, but it's not good for it you. It doesn't even taste good. Like, let's uh, be, oh, shit. Dude, let's be, no, 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 no. It, it's it's amazing. It, no, no, no. That's Let's, okay, put, let's put it this way. It tastes good for the healthy connoisseur, but for like 90% of Winter Haven, gotcha. it's shit. Gotcha. So, they're, no, like I don't even dunk it in soy sauce or nothing. Like it's just straight vegetables <laughs> in my mouth. And I'm like, fuck yeah, I'm kind of crying. But then I'm like, nah, it's going to be worth it when I look in the mirror. Like, sex. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, it's yeah, it's yeah. a vicious cycle, but it's cool. Anyways, what the fuck were we talking about? See, this is crazy. It's just like boop, 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 boop. I know. Well, anyways, we'll yeah, just keep yeah. going. Um, we'll just let it ride. Um, real quick though, can I just like say a couple things? Sure. Dude, I feel like I'm in an episode of fucking euphoria right now. <laughs> <laughs> this is dope as shit, dude. If you guys if you guys haven't been here, um this place is dope. Okay. When I first walked into your older location, when I first met yeah. you, do you remember that? I do. Okay. Uh, you bought the leather jacket. Yeah, yeah, I bought the leather jacket. And then I bought some pins from you, can, too. Yeah, can I tell you about that? Yeah, okay, go for it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> dude, I was... <laughs> because that 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 moment was uh, very meaningful to me for many reasons. But one of those reasons were uh, was that... Uh, you know, that jacket was like 60 bucks or something like that. Really? Yeah, you paid like 50 or 60 bucks. Did I? Did I? Okay, okay. And, I, I, don't, I don't remember how much I paid for it. But anyway, that was like a high price item yeah. at that time in my, that was my second store. Oh, okay, cool. And, you know, like that, it was so funny to me because like, uh, you know, I was already, I was two years in business and I was yeah. thinking like, damn, like uh, he bought that like no problem. And, you know, Winter Haven. Yeah, it, yeah. Not everybody has money here. Yeah, right. So, right, um, right. a sixty dollar, you know, retail price is is something that I was, I was just impressed with. But I was really grateful because every yeah. every penny counted. That's dope, man. I yeah. didn't, I did not know that. I think you spent like a hundred bucks. No joke. Yeah, I think <laughs> altogether. I, I, I forget what I what I spent there. I I wanted to come back and spend more because I do like thrifting like a lot. That's like my shit. But um, okay, I'm gonna tell you something about that experience. I walked in there and I saw you and I was like, God damn, this guy is so handsome. <laughs> Holy <laughs> shit, dude. Thank you, dude. I was like, damn it, dude. So I was like intimidated at first. I'm not going to lie. And then I was like, <laughs> all right, I'm just going to fucking make eye contact and look him in the eyes. I was like, dude, he's going to be great. He's going to do great things. That's People are going to walk in here and they're going to be swoon and... <laughs> <laughs> and then like the just love the whole word, vintage dude. vibe and shit i was like oh he's gonna do fine it's fine because i mean i think i'm like a solid six and you were like a nine <laughs> i was like fuck dude the long hair and shit i was like god damn it all right so it's cool dude man it, i appreciate that yeah dude. of course man i mean we got to look out for each other i mean Guys got to, you know, compliment each other you know, every people, once in a while. A lot of people know you in this town and they call, you know, some people have like big crushes on you, dude. Yeah. Um, it's, Isn't that funny, dude? <laughs> people just give me all the fucking like insides and the outs of this town. Yeah, dude. It's weird. I'm either like, I'm either like someone's crush or I'm like they're like public enemy number one. <laughs> It's fucking bad, dude. Like, I'm like their worst nightmare. They're like, oh, Mario? 
<laughs> yeah, no, I know him. And I'm like, oh, shit. <laughs> what do they say about me? They're like, yeah, you don't want to know. And usually when they're like, ah, nothing really. Like, it means they were shit talking like a motherfucker. <laughs> it's all good. It's okay. I know who you are. I know where you live. I know where you work. It's okay. <laughs> I'm keeping tabs on you, dude, just like you're keeping tabs on me. But, um, That's nah, amazing, nah, it's cool. Dude. It's cool. Um, I mean, yeah, there's like a handful of like pretty boys, I guess. We've, I, I don't know. I guess I like got called that uh when i first started in this in this uh wacky world of tattooing and immediately got thrown right next to brandon hutchinson Mm. shout out brandon hutchinson um big ass eyelashes (laughs) and those fucking lips fuck him so (laughs) yeah dude it just was a great attribute tall as shit i'm kind of a short guy like these docs like if we they're (laughs) they're platforms bro like so i mean yeah, like, I'm like, dude, dox or die, but it's kind of not because I'm like, yeah, I only support dox. It's because, like, yeah, they make platform boots and they look good on me, so I don't look like a short piece of shit. But, yeah, um, it's cool, dude. It's cool. Um, That's dope, dude. Yeah, I, uh, yeah, so, people talk. Yeah, this Just this talk. town is, yeah. is very, when you're in a small town, you have to be really cautious about uh, certain relationships you get into and yeah. and the kind of, like, the negative talk. Yeah, it's just a small town. Yeah, you know, dude, it's, I, it's weird, dude. And and I reckon I, I I bumped into you a couple of times, but in it's funny because like I get recognized a lot in this town. Yeah, just I'm from sure. being in three different stores and in right. all demographics too. It's like yeah, yeah. like the uh, people on meth and the uh, homeless, and then all the way to people God that very well, uh, are very wealthy. So it's, yeah, yeah, it's right. like across the all. I mean, it's so funny. God save the fucking. <laughs> meth heads man i um it's uh winter haven's weird it's like a a a melting pot it's a very strange melting pot um let's put it this way uh i've i've lived in a couple other towns before and winter haven's got like the kookiest people like they're like just straight crazy like i'm like (laughs) what the fuck dude like like, I can't tell you how many times I, I'd go out in public and I'm like, yo, did this just fucking happen. I'm like trying to like low key, like get my phone out and shit. I'm like, dude, what the hell? This is insane. Like, there are some crazy people here. Um, and I think it's because we get like this fever of being in a small town and we can't mm. really leave it. It's weird. I, nine times, nine times out of ten, the people that like I link up with, they're like, "Hey, bro, you still here, dog?" I'm like, "Yeah, I'm still here. You too." And like, we look at each other and we're like giving each other those eyes, yeah, like yeah. we just can't fucking leave. Like it's, yeah, it's weird. I tried to leave multiple times, and it just, I, I just whoo, come back. Like it's, it's crazy. What, what do you think that you know <laughs> keeps you here? The, the, I think the, 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 the. the magnetic force let's call it that there's some magnetic force here for sure yeah you know what i'm saying it's weird i, I feel the the energy um so we'll call it that I, i'm being polite but uh i think honestly in 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 in, in all honesty it's it's anywhere you go that you spend a lot of time at and you make some sort of roots you just mm. kind of it just it's very familiar you know what i'm saying yeah so if it's familiar, then why not stay? You know what I'm saying? And you're doing well for yourself or doing better off than what you were before. That's right. You know what I'm saying? You as have long some as... foundation here. Yeah, like, yeah, exactly. Why start over? Exactly. Why? You know what I'm saying? And I'm going to tap into this later um, because we're going to go over a lot of shit. So buckle yeah. the fuck up. Yeah. But uh, I'm excited, dude. Yeah, yeah. I'm me excited. too, dude. Um, we're not even into the dirty shit. I know, shit. dude. Like, I'm kind of <laughs> sweating my dick off already but like <laughs> maybe i should take off these layers but i do have the sleeveless hoodie too just in case like the signature he always wears his hoodies with no sleeves like what the fuck is that <laughs> dude it's fucking hot in here and like i'm self-conscious so leave me alone but <laughs> i might have to throw it on because like it gets hot in here but yeah. right now i'm gonna keep the swag like just just dripping real quick but um i uh dude the uh if you get comfortable somewhere um and you 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 gain familiarity with yourself and you start growing people associate leaving as in failing or letting go of progression you know what i'm saying yeah and that's you don't want to get confused with that because that's dangerous you know what i'm saying i feel like 
a lot of people get that confused and they're like, no, nah, okay, I'm just going to stay here then and just fuck it. Because they have aspirations, they have dreams, and it sometimes it gets to the point where it's cringe, where you have those aspirations and dreams living in a town like this because they're like, bro, chill the fuck out. Like, you're not doing that. Like, uh, calm down. Wake up to the real world. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, just I do. Buckle in, get yourself a nice truck, lift that bitch up, <laughs> throw some thick ass tires on. It's all good. Like, you just calm down. You know what I'm saying? Like, you're, you think you're the shit or whatever, but like, it sucks because you're trying to represent an area that hopefully kind of um, puts you on their back almost mm -hmm. um, without putting as much weight as possible. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. I'm not relying on this town, but I would like to represent it. And, I'm not going to lie. I had a lot of friends in the past, unfortunately. Um, I don't know what they're doing now. So they're probably succeeding and doing what I hope they are. But um, I, I saw firsthand a lot of people struggling in this town to do things out of the norm, like music wise, mm. art wise, film wise, um, <clears throat> just, you know what I'm saying? Like just stuff like that. So um, and getting ridiculed for it and kind of made fun of, you know what I'm saying? Wait, so they had like ambition, yeah, and they they put themselves out there, yeah, and and it kind of gets get really cute. And you know what the worst is when there's no response. It's like the people that just are an audience and they don't do shit. They just they're like, yeah, that's cool. You know what I'm saying? Um, so okay, that's yeah. interesting that you say. I mean, that. we could dive into that. Yeah, like, I, I want to. Yeah, I want to dive in that. Okay, what what <clears throat> what is it about the people? Because like people. Uh, Let's say small town, for instance. Okay. You have you have enough people here. There's like fifty in the city, fifty thousand people. Yeah. Let you could get all the support yeah. in the craft that you do. Oh, for sure. But it's so odd how Yeah. It it just doesn't work out this way. And I, I just I'm curious to understand, like we put so much effort and energy into celebrities and they give mm -hmm. two shit. They don't even know who you are, number one. And you have an opportunity to support someone right next to you. And they won't give you any likes, and it's because they what don't. Do you, what do you think about that? That's the key right there. Is right next to you. You don't see that celebrity, so you're like, it's almost like a, a an unconscious effort to to believe in something that isn't real. Like this celebrity is just, mm -hmm. I'm never gonna see this person, but so fuck it, I'm gonna throw a like. On. It's so weird. It's the same instance as me charging for a tattoo higher priced, right? And they'll just throw you a bigger tip usually instead of me being like, you know what, let me just go ahead and just knock off a couple hundred dollars so I can keep more of a bigger tip and I get no tip. No tip. It's fucking weird. See, the way you reacted, it's oh, weird. Fuck, dude. Okay, it's fucking <laughs> weird. It's weird. Now, check this out. Check this out. It's because they're like, okay, this person is – so back to the celebrity <clears throat> status and why they're feeding it to them and not a, a, a local – it's because they're like, they're all the way up here and the masses are already doing it for them. So I'm just going to slide in and be a part of it because it's already done. It's uh -huh. not out of the norm. You know what I'm saying? It's weird. It, it, people are afraid of being different, bro. Be fucking different, dog. Like, who gives a fuck what people think? Man, I'm going to get it right up in this fucking <laughs> mic, bro. Be different, bro. Be different. For real, bro. Like, I, who gives a shit who says you're corny or cringe or whatever the fuck they say behind your back, bro? Like, be different. That's when I start saying, bro. Like, I just start getting all, like, hood and shit. But, like, for real. Like, people like to congregate in groups you know what i'm saying no one wants to hunt alone no one wants to do things alone you know what right. i'm saying it's scary man no it's no it's scary and there's so and i think they fear their embarrassment it's like yeah a, a trying to go somewhere think about it think about this real quick i didn't mean to cut you sure. off um think about this you like a video or you like uh, a you know a musician or whatever and you post yo i just like this person's music go check them out they just, you know, they're doing big moves. They're blowing up and shit like that. And then you like a locals post, right? And it only got 13 likes. And it's just sitting at like 13 likes. Some mm. people look at that and they're like, oh, fuck, dude. I probably shouldn't have liked this person's shit because this is awkward as fuck. You know what I'm saying? Oh, that's a thing, that's a bro. That's an interesting point it's of view. It's weird. It's a thing. It's, it really is a thing. And I, I'm going to be real with you. It's a thing because I do it. I do that shit all the time, bro. Um, unless something really really sparks you know what i'm saying sure. like uh, a local artist you know what i'm saying like um there's a couple instances where i went shopping um and uh you know thrift shopping or whatever locally around here in florida and um you know hole in the wall places with local artist paintings and stuff and i'm mm. just or uh for example polk museum in lakeland 
There was one when I did the Maniac trailer. I did that scene where I'm looking at um like some painting. You don't see it, but I'm like it's like a super tight shot, and right. I'm looking up at this painting. That painting is fucking insane, dude. Like I will, I will, I'll send you a message when I I'll, I'll get a chance and send it to you. It's a local artist that's here uh, locally, and they just hung their shit up in the Polk Museum. And it's by the way, it's free admission in there, so it's no crazy shit. Wow. Walk up in there, second floor. And it's just a dim lit painting, and it's a a painting of it's an oil painting of um rough waters, like rough sea water. I know mm. it sounds so funny. It's just it's it's crazy, but it's rough. It's just a rough the scene of a rough ocean. It's weird. Mm. Um, just like a, a storm's coming, and like you're out in the middle of nowhere, and you see these waves and the ripples, and like the artists like almost texturize the painting Ooh, to the point where you can yeah. see it just come at you, and like I could. Bro, for a second, like, I was just out. I was just, like, staring at it, and I was just looking at it. <laughs> Excuse me. No, you're good, bro. You're good. My, my boy is, uh, he's getting choked up about the art. Like, it's it's a it's a sensitive subject. Hold on. It's all good. I don't feel bad now when I have to, like, get up and shit. So, do I look good? Hold on a second. This, I told Steven this is my good side, so... This better be my fucking... Go- oh, okay. I can kind of see it. Yeah, it's my good side. Okay, cool. Steven, don't cut any of this out. Just let it ride, okay? I want everyone to know I'm a fucking douchebag. <laughs> Fuck yeah, dude. It's, it's awesome so, far. so, um... If you guys like spicy food, go to Thai Haven. I'm gonna just keep <laughs> plugging in Thai Haven. That shit is fucking <laughs> awesome. Great, Thai the shit. dude. Thai Haven is the shit. I fucking love them, dude. They're amazing, amazing people. Very friendly. They get busy as shit. Um, support local businesses. That's why I'm saying it for real. Including my man here, man. Like this is crazy as fuck. If you want to get like aesthetic and like start taking selfies and <laughs> like tell like I don't know, just throw people off that you know they think you're in Saint Pete or or in Tampa. Nope, you're in fucking little Winter Haven. This is dope. And you can find my shop in downtown Winter Haven. It's Long Live Vintage, 333 Avenue C, Southwest, Winter Haven, Florida. Yeah. Thank you for the shout out, dude. Hell yeah, bro. <laughs> I mean, I plugged you and you just kind of alley-ooped it. You know, so <laughs> that's cool, man. Um, yeah, he has uh, a lot of cool stuff. Am I allowed to say what you have in here or no? Yeah. Sure. Okay, he's got pipe bombs. Um dick shape paraphernalia like glass bongs <laughs> like it's there's a huge one over there it's like super girthy <laughs> no, i'm just kidding i'm kidding i'm kidding no no no, no. but he's got cool <laughs> shit bro that's I'm the first lie. time i heard that word girthy. bro we got a lot to talk about i'm not even gonna cap <laughs> so um man that's yeah. that's really interesting and yeah it's 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 weird people it's all walks of life come in but they all have that same demeanor you know what I'm saying? Yeah, that the element of the over, uh, I guess, overwhelming feeling of like entering a new space. Mm-hmm. I never thought about that yeah. until you just mentioned it. But you do feel like you're in a different place, yeah. and the yeah. anticipation mm-hmm. is very present. Yeah, you know. So that's a. It uh, it's like you're stepping. Doesn't into matter a, who you are, actually. No, you know? not not at all. Hell no. I've got people from all walks of the earth with. You know, and we're talking classism all up and down the board. You know what I'm saying? Mm. It doesn't matter how fucking tough you think you are. Got dudes fucking coming in, (laughs) looking like they could beat your ass, and they're crying in that chair, bro. (laughs) Like crying. And then I got, yeah, bro. And then you got like moms of like, you know, two, three, four, five, and they're coming in, and I'm, you know, they got really sensitive skin. I'm like, oh fuck, you know what I'm saying? And I'm just going in, drilling in, you know, getting the tattoo going, and. I'm like, hey, are you doing okay? And they're like, yeah, I don't feel shit, dude. Like, go, keep going. I'm about to fall asleep. It's like, it's crazy, man. <laughs> I'm like, who would have fucking thought, dude? This is nuts. You know what I'm saying? Or first timers versus people who or who are covered in tattoos. You know what I'm saying? I'm one. I'm a giant pussy when it comes to tattoos. <laughs> I have tons of tattoo, terrible, shitty tattoos. I'm, I'm working on a cover up right now. Shout out JD. But I like um, that a lot, dude. Yeah, it's cool. It's 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 a blast over. But I fucking hated every second That's of it. A lot of shading. I, yeah, I have dude. something similar. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. And yeah this yeah. was a, this was a cover up too. But That's the beautiful. first time yeah. you're talking about like going to sleep. 
Mm-hmm. The first time I did this, uh, it was like a, another version of this. Mm-hmm. And yeah, I got this covered up in Puerto Rico, but one of my friends did it. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, I think for one one person <laughs> that has a blacked out arm. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> we no. could we both appreciate. Successful yeah. cover up too. If, uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's he, what you want. I think they, uh, he's a really uh, uh, nice, uh, one incredible pr- uh, yeah. artist in Puerto Rico. Mm-hmm. And he just worked with what he could, you know, like, and, you know, I probably will, you know, laser or something and start over. Maybe do like the laser shade. Okay. You know, where yeah. they shade it off and oh, then just yeah. start something else. But okay. anyway, the first time I did it, mm-hmm. I flew to New York City to get it done. And one of my boys uh, in New York did it. Mm-hmm. And just in, a, in a, not that much experience. But what's crazy about it is that, dude, we were there for hours. I mean, really? I think it was like 17 hours. In I'm, one session? Yeah, I'm not joking, dude. I was because I, I was only there for three days. So I ha- I started, we started like in the morning and then just the whole day until the next morning, I think like at 11 a.m. is when we stopped. Holy shit. It was fucking crazy. But dude, I remember I fell asleep while getting tattooed. Did you? I swear to God. And I, and not I, me. And uh-uh. I, what's is crazy is that, uh, you know, we, I guess that kind of ties into the whole pain thing. Mm-hmm. The... There's some people that, you know, I wonder if this is for you. I, I'll actually, I'll kind of segue into my next question. Sure, yeah. You have uh, what I, I guess is called body modification, uh, mm-hmm. the scarring. Mm-hmm. And uh, um, if you're seeing uh, on the camera, if you the video version on YouTube, you can see this. But I'm just wondering about this. You know, like <laughs> I always wonder about everyone that, you know, you know has these yeah. uh, pieces of art. And I, I wonder, like, how... The, the process. First of all, wh- which one was the first one that you had? On my face? Yeah. Um, shit, can I phone a friend? Hold on, wait. I'm trying to think. <laughs> I know Tyler would know. Um, <laughs> phone a friend. Yeah, my boy Tyler, he has like just as many face tattoos as I do. And um, we kind of like grew up just kind of competing with each other <laughs> on like who, who's getting the next tattoo. Um, I'm fucking winning, by the way. So, <laughs> fuck off. But yeah, um, let me think here. What was my first face tat? Oh, it was the create. Oh wow. Yeah, on the forehead. Holy shit! Do you have a hairline tattoo? No. no oh, uh, I no. see. There's like some lettering. Yeah, yeah. There's, there's, there's the. Holy cow! So I have art is eternal across the middle of the forehead. I um, love that. Dude. That's in Turkish though. Um, and then wow. uh. I got uh, numb on the on the other side, um, uh, for for X because uh, X had numb on his oh, face, and yeah, I, yeah. that was a uh, super influential artist to me, uh, especially when it came to art in general. Yeah, uh, great great artist, and um, the meaning behind why he got it, and you know, I mean, he connected with a lot of other people uh, with the symbolism behind his work and his his body art as well so I, I got that for for you know the same reason um but i was i was keeping everything above at a certain level because <laughs> the job that i had at the time i could just tuck the hat down <laughs> you can't be and me. yeah just rock it out so um well yeah to, to get back to the scar yeah yeah uh, the scarring so, so I, i'm curious about we, we we were talking about pain and i was saying that like the that the pain for me was just that are you, you talking know, about this white scar? Hey, this the tolerant, yeah. Oh. Well, yes, the mm-hmm. the scarring. That's that's a tattoo. Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh, can I see that? Yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Oh, so it's white. It's white ink. Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, holy shit. I tr- I try to 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 make the scar like kind of permanent, um, and look into body modification and stuff like because I just I I I don't know I. I was a sick fuck at the time. Um, and then um, I just decided to try white ink out and see what it would look like. Dude, that shit looks sick, dude. And now it's that something. I, not, not it's that something. I know, uh, even though that... Yeah. Uh, now that it's, a, it's not an actual right, it scar. It looks real. It looks like a fucking scar. It's crazy. Damn, dude. No, it's a tattoo, though. Yeah, 100%. Wow. Do you perform yeah. uh, tattoos like this? Sure. Yeah. Sure, sure. Uh, I mean, it's not... Uh, it's not a popular request. Not at all in Florida. <laughs> like not at all. Um, I had this like ongoing thing with everyone. Everyone knows this, but I have this like ongoing thing where I uh, this the skin here is shit. 
So oh. in Florida, it's uh, for certain things, it's just not appropriate. You know what I'm saying? Um, so, yeah, um, people have a tendency to just sunbathe out here and just roast in the fucking sun. And yeah, what's that about? I don't <laughs> I don't fucking know. I don't know. Um, they people, all look like Hulk Hogan, like at 50 years old, dude, like men and women. They all look the same. It's crazy because those Hulk Hogan looking motherfuckers <laughs> come in and demand sleeves. Uh, and I'm like, yeah. are you fucking shitting me? Like, this is crazy. Like, hell yeah, to the roof, man. We're charging this because this is going to be a pain in my ass, man. This is a nightmare. But anyways, yeah, there's certain things that you just can't and can't do. Um, gotcha. And um I mean, ultimately, if they're like, hey, you know, I really do want to do this with you. I don't trust anyone else. Then whatever, we'll run it. You know, I guess it is what it is. But we give them that disclaimer. We like to tell them, hey, excuse me, this may not last forever. This may turn this white may turn yellow eventually because if you're out in the sun or whatever, maybe, you know, like stuff like that. So, yeah, just things that we like to um, be cordial about. Sure. Um, Yeah, we'll still, you know, take your money. But. You know, we want to at least, like, inform you. Okay, so, so. speaking about that, like, mm-hmm. you know, taking money. So, it, are there any <clears throat> jobs that you just you just denied and say that I'm not fucking doing this? Yeah, gas station clerk. Gas station clerk? Yeah. What's are, that about? Are, are, you, are you asking if I yeah, took like, on I, jobs? I, well, if you ever turned down a job uh, of a tattoo that you just didn't dis- Oh, you're didn't talking about tattoos. With? Yeah, yeah. Sorry oh, I thought you meant in general. Yeah. Um, shout out all you gas station clerks. Um, <laughs> I'm so sorry, but I could not do that. I thought you meant like, have you ever been offered a job position and you turned oh. it down? <laughs> yeah, no, I'm not doing that. Um, you know, y'all, y'all are crazy for that. That's crazy. But, um, <laughs> no, um, yeah. It, are there any tattoos like at the shop that you just, Put, uh, turned them away and said, "I'm sorry, dude. I'm, I can't do that one." Um. Yeah. Uh. There's been a few here and there. Um. I think it's based upon skin contrast too. You know. Oh, I see. That's a thing, man. Um. So I guess there's not. There hasn't been anything that's been offensive. That. Oh no, I haven't got okay. anything like that yet. I feel like it's coming. There's something yeah. that's gonna come. But um, if it's coming my way, I'm gonna. I'm going to turn it down. <laughs> no, no, no. I mean, we'll see what happens. I mean, it's always a good experience, something for the first time. Depends as long as it's not like something crazy. But yeah, I mean, I've heard stories of other artists turning down shit that's obviously clearly offensive. But right. I haven't personally, no, I haven't really got anything nice up to or anything. So it'll, I'm sure it'll happen. At, yeah, I'm sure it will. At some point. Yeah. It's, <laughs> it's like it's, a swastika on that. <laughs> oh, shit, man. It's going to happen. It's. I know it's going to happen. Fuck. The face tattoos. I'm I'm curious about this because uh, and I I've talked about I've talked about this to customers I've had, and I'm just curious coming from your point of view, someone who has face tattoos and and is is a tattoo artist. What, what when you first made the commitment to get a face tattoo? What was the thought process in your you know your head and you know what what was the final saying that you say you know what fuck this I'm I'm doing this. Um, there comes a time in your life where you are inspired to not fail at something. And I think when I decided to get my first face tattoo, I planted a seed in my head that allowed me to, uh, to kind of push myself to say, Hey, Dude, you need to be an artist. That's it. You know, you're meant to be an artist. Mm-hmm. You're not meant to do this nine to five bullshit overnight shit. It's just not happening. So do anything in your physical power to try to get fired, to get <laughs> fueled up. To um, oh, I see. To I didn't get a face tattoo so I can get fired from my job. I basically it, it was that seed that planted in me to uh, to express myself. A full on commitment. Uh, yeah, this man. is my life. Um, yeah. Um. I mean, even like with laser treatments and the advancement of technology over time, I mean, I still wanted to express myself the way I wanted to, you know what I'm saying? So, um, and that was, that was with a a face tattoo. I, I I was very passionate about something and I wear my heart on my sleeve for sure. Yeah. Uh, There's different ways you can do it. And that was one of them. And, um, some people think it's extra or whatever it may be in their vernacular, but 
I think it's um, I think it's pretty bold um, and it I guess opens a gateway to discuss what motivates someone you know what I'm saying like why does that person have face tattoo you know, right. you, know what I'm saying? you know how many fucking times I walk into Publix and people just fucking stare like mm. stare man it's crazy I I sometimes I at first in the beginning when I first got face tattoos that were more visible like when I started getting around my eye area they say that um when you start getting them under or above your eye it, under your eye for sure immediately changes your physical appearance wow like that's like the first step right there it's it's it alters your your facial structure it's crazy um and then and then after that it it you <laughs> You deal with this kind of anyone who gets face tattoos or anything that like seems bold on them. You'll know exactly what I'm talking about right here. There's that moment where you get like a face tattoo. And then like after like for the next three days, <laughs> you're like, why the fuck did I do this, bro? Oh, my God. <laughs> you're looking in the mirror and you're like. You, what, you don't recognize yourself? Yeah, dude. Like you're trying to make it work. <laughs> like you're, you, you, you pictured it way better in your head. And then you're like, fuck, that is weird way bigger I, I suppose, than i thought yeah i suppose you know that is an adjustment it's, it's sure. a huge adjustment because think about how long you've lived your life just seeing your face like this how culture has in general pop and just ordinary day-to-day -day culture has trained our minds to just be acclimated to nothing on the face you know what mm. i'm saying only makeup is 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 just you know what i'm saying and then all of a sudden you get it on yourself a face tattoo never mind all of a sudden these rappers popping up with face tattoos and then the culture gets shifted and then instagram models are popping up and they're making them look good and stuff like now all of a sudden it's on you because at first you're like ha that's cool man maybe one day <laughs> and then all of a sudden you got it and you're like i better fuck with this every single day and sometimes i don't i don't and i'm like really? shit. Holy yeah cow, man, man for sure there's sometimes where you just want to Dude, you you age and you get older sure. and you're yeah. like, shit, dude, I need to make sure that whatever I put on my body is an aesthetic I fuck with for the rest of my life or it will fuck with your self-conscious for sure. Like it's so your your uh, your expression is more artistic and, and I'm sure there are people that their expression is more pain. Mm. You know, some people will get, you know, tattoos all over you know and, right and what if it's like a female for instance right right it's not a very common thing but when it does happen mm -hmm. you think about some type of trauma or some type of pain attached yeah you know it's a full commitment especially <clears throat> how society is with females yeah so you know what do you think about that what do i think about females or i guess like people what, what do you think about like the the pain attachment to face tattoos physical or do you want to dive deeper like in in the mind the psyche okay um so naturally uh your endorphins skyrocket when you get a tattoo um so some people just come in because they need to feel something there are people who come in just to get touch-ups on tattoos when they don't even need them mm. because they just want to feel that shit and you know technically depending on what shop you're at touch-ups are free so they just come in they're like yeah let me just feel this real quick you know what i'm saying it's like a drug yeah it's crazy man they 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 need that shit they need to feel it um that's why also walk-in clients you know they turn into full sleeve clients most of the time because they they get like one little walk-in and they liked how it felt their experience was good and the pain attached to that experience that great experience oh was it, it doesn't even become pain now it's it almost it's pleasure yeah it's like a pleasure it's like fuck man like i need to feel that again because i get this whole experience when i'm feeling that you know what yeah, i'm saying yeah. so um there are some people who get it also to um exercise i guess demons and bad energy out of them uh whether it be cover-ups or whether it be a representation of something that represented uh, something in their past mm. um a lot of like uh, for example like females get medusas man and medusa the story behind her it's pretty powerful and it's 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 aggressive and mm. um most females that get medusas with me they have a story attached to them i ask every single client you know if you don't feel comfortable telling me but do you mind you know if i ask why you're getting a medusa and 
um very rarely they just say because you know it's pretty and it's cool and badass but most of the time it's because there's there's a lot of pain attached to it and while they're getting it done they feel that pain and they're exercising what they felt inside of them and it's just almost like you're doing Mm. them a service by almost like burying it and forgetting about it you know what i'm saying it's real man it's real it's real Um, i've had clients message me and tell me you know like hey the tattoo healed out great and this is uh you know this this has been awesome and uh, i just want to let you know like this helped me get over the and it's 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 actually ironic because now it's on you for life and you're like fuck well it's on them and it's a constant reminder but it's it's almost like a beacon of hey you did this and you conquered it here's like your scar to prove it i see you know what i'm saying so it's it can be a score of, of pain and yeah a score of symbolism yeah nobility bravery <clears throat> um you know just um overcoming adversity you know there's just and and pain is is a good segue for that you know what i'm saying like if it if i just tickled you with a feather and you got a tattoo you're like fuck this shit bro like this doesn't <laughs> even feel like i did something oh, you know what i'm saying oh wow, that's great yeah i love that it's 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 like dude i came in here and i got fucked up for seven hours and i feel exhausted i feel drained and i loved it because i feel like this is worth my money like i felt what i needed to feel you know what i'm saying mm. that's why they come back too man this, they come back so you know and that's why i come back shit because i i do bitch the whole time but at the <laughs> end i'm like i'm like damn I bro I, bitch. yeah hell yeah <laughs> Hell yeah, but I, I look at myself and I'm excuse me, and I'm like, damn, I did that. That was crazy. You know, my arm, my whole arm swollen shut, and I'm like, damn, I can't wait for the next one. I'm not gonna lie because I needed that. Like, I needed to feel that because it was either that or I'm gonna go ahead and tap into something I shouldn't tap into. Ooh. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, it yeah, just yeah. takes that edge off. You know, it's sure. kind of like a fly swatter. That's what tattoos are to people as well. You mm. know, so um that's that's almost the same kind of sensation like jerking off you know (laughs) fuck yeah man yeah jerking (laughs) off dude jerking off is uh can we just let's talk about this real quick hold on a second i'm talking to the people too um jerking jerking (laughs) off the act of um pleasuring yourself is extremely important dude like extremely important it's crazy a lot of people you know they either hear that and they're like oh okay whatever you know but i'm not gonna make a serious fucking like 30 minute combo about this but i'm just saying like <laughs> it's fucking wild it's like how if you want to yeah it's funny how you said like just like jerking off it's like a fly swatter if you're about to do some off the wall shit and you feel like it's just uh spur of the moment just go jerk off real quick you're good Mm. clear head every time every fucking time it's insane so this works across the board not even you know sometimes what people will and i i used to work with some co-workers like this they would you know uh, pay for prostitutes and and really and uh what do you call that uh the escorts escorts mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and you know they would tell they sometimes when they were on a budget <laughs> or they <laughs> uh, sometimes Hell they didn't yeah. have the funds to it they said they would tell me uh jerking off sometimes you'll just clear your head and you're just like oh fuck i'm good that's all i that's all i I don't need to spend money on a chick right now to be disappointed ultimately yeah and feel shitty about myself yeah not all the time that happens but it generally does happen to many men that have to pay for sex all the time right and sometimes just uh busting one out can just bring you back cures everything bro it's fucking crazy like um the the i guess the most clutch thing it's ever done no pun intended is uh <laughs> it, it it prevents you from uh recommitting uh mistakes when it comes to love life you know what i'm saying like especially mm. it derails you from making uh, the same mistakes you've done in the past when it comes to exes you know i i can't tell you how many times in the past with an ex i i'm like yeah you know i'm i'm, I'm not, I'm thinking um, I get lost in, you know, in my thoughts and I'm thinking about an ex and I'm thinking about all the good times. And, you know, especially if the sex is great, you're like, fuck. All right. I'm going to go ahead and just <laughs> unblock her real quick and just I just want to see like what she's up to. You know, so that's it. I'm just trying to like be cordial. But, um, you know, th- those those certain entities take over. And then, uh, you know, what's crazy is um, you kind of get 
caught up in the hype and then all of a sudden I'm like, yeah, I'm just going to, you know, jerk off or whatever. I'm getting hyped up and I jerk off. And all of a sudden I'm like, what the fuck am I doing? I dude, like, fuck. fuck. It. Yeah, fuck dude, it. block, <laughs> block, block. I, this was this was a mistake. I'm sorry. <laughs> fuck, block. Like, no, hell no. You know what I'm saying? It, it clears you so good. And it's crazy because all my homies, you know, they, they say the same thing, man. They're like, dude, um, you're out in the club one night, you know, and uh, you're desperate to, you know, get some action or like come home with somebody. And you, you know, and <laughs> yo, go to the bathroom real quick and yeah. rub one out. And all of a sudden you're like, nah, I'm yeah. just going to go get Subway and just go home. Yeah, and that's that sounds it. like you a great time, saying? dude. That's it. That's it. It's all it is, man. It's it. it's crazy. And then with anything, honestly, you just have a clear head, bro. It's That's it. So you're, you're suggesting that sometimes when there's a, a difficult decision or uh, I guess one that can hold a lot of weight, <laughs> jerk off. I guess, and if you're a female, this might not apply. It's not that, it's not that convenient sometimes. For yeah, females, but, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, try to get a clear head. Yeah, definitely. Rub one out. Yeah, yeah. If if you want to take away anything from this uh, little mini segment, clear head. Just go rub one out. Just <laughs> go do it real quick, man. I'm telling you, anything you do it, with with anything you do for sure. Um, but yeah, I, I it's it saved me a lot. A lot for sure um avoided a lot of past mistakes but anyways yeah you know just um <laughs> we're, we're talking about jerking off too much but yeah <laughs> i could go on and on if you want but it's all good oh man that's great dude um so tell me about the maniac movie what happened with this what's the status and and tell tell people a little bit about that whole process and all the things like tied to it um okay so uh I'll make this quick too, because not a lot of people really can get in touch with this. So, um, I, I, it is interesting though, but, um, I've, I've always, I always been a movie buff. Uh, I grew up watching cinema and, and movies and not just bullshit movies, but like just great, great cinema with my mother. Uh, we used to go out all the time, uh, to, to, to the movie theater. This was way before streaming and shit became like a thing. Right. Netflix was still sending out like DVDs and Ooh, shit. Yeah, you know what yeah, I'm saying? I remember so, that, yeah. yeah, that shit was dope. Um, but I remember like, yeah, my, my, you know, me and my mom, we didn't, we, we didn't really come. F- she didn't have a lot of money and we didn't really, uh, come from that at all. So, um, our way of having fun was just to go catch matinees and, you know, wow. see yeah. a bunch of movies in one day. We I remember we saw like four movies in one day over the weekend, you know, it's just because she was like, you want to go see another one? Yeah, fuck it. And like, that's just how we connected and bonded. And it was crazy because like falling in love with that, like growing up, I was like, damn, man. Like as I got older, I was like, I want people to have those same experiences that I had growing up it doesn't even have to be with my mother but it just you know feeling comfortable and safe and getting lost in a world where you can just feel something like that you know what i'm saying right. um i was so inspired and then and then uh, naturally i was just drawn to acting and portraying a character and stuff like that and um you know just telling a story i i always i always wanted to be a storyteller ever since i could remember and that's why I, I chose art as an outlet and then from there it just branched into more things as I got older and you know got more comprehensive with technology and stuff like that so if I once I started to know how to work a camera then I was like ooh, I can tell a story now with a camera you know what I'm saying this is cool I see yeah, and then yeah. as I got more comprehensive with like editing or this or social media performance and stuff like that you know so um I genuinely love movies and film um i love like the aesthetic that you can portray um and uh long story short i came here to florida i met up with my best friend tyler um he was an actor he's an actor as well he's the one that was alongside with me in the trailer dude did a fucking killer job it was dope as shit and uh he pours his heart and soul into it too because he loves portraying something and like getting the audience to be like dude what the fuck you know what i'm saying like we like that. So um, I came up with this idea, this this idea um, of an artist who kind of indulges himself in the, I guess, uh, the, the, the beauty of like what you can do with a piece of paper. And 
that kind of stemmed into like this crazy extravagant story wow. where, you know, what, what, what can you do with a piece of paper and what can you do with your art? physically like literally you know what i'm saying like oh you can you know move people and make people feel some type of way about art and stuff like that but what can you do with a piece of paper can you draw something and then have it come to life instead of like you know the uh the literal term where people walk up to a gallery and they're like oh this painting moved me you know what i'm saying the, right the, the the kinesthetic uh properties of of a painting it, it just moved me in some type of way and it made me feel like i was there and like it could just pop out of the, the 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 page itself and you know i can have it land in my hands well what if you can actually do that in a world you know what i'm saying where you can draw something real quick and then pull it out of the paper and ha make it come to life or you can write something or draw something and it happens and you can create and alter events and history and wow you dude. know stuff like that yeah, it was crazy and it was before i knew about like death note and stuff before that anime existed yeah, so yeah. and i've got proof i got the receipts bro i, I came <laughs> up with this in like 2011 i didn't know sh i still don't know shit about anime and i didn't know back then and um we were recording shit off like little digital cameras you know what i'm saying like nothing nothing nowhere near anything that's accessible at the price it's at now but um just shitty you know fucking degrade trailers because we were just kids that just wanted to make movies man that was it we didn't give a shit how many views it had or what it would do but then we got older and then you know we got back into it and tapped into it and then one day you know i linked up with tyler and we had a uh, one of one of my other buddies who's big into film he does most of my photo shoots and stuff like that and does a lot of my cinema work for my advertising um you know he he um we all got together one day and i was like bro what if we just like remade the trailer for maniac and just like see what happens like are we just like still big kids that need to grow the fuck up or do you think people will actually tap in and be like wow so wait uh maniac you guys did something similar years ago yeah maniac is an original <clears throat> idea that i came up with 12 years ago and wow. then i remade the trailer just Dude, the recently. trailer if you haven't checked that out please <laughs> it's still on it's on youtube and yeah and i really think you should develop this i mean no so um real quick update and then i'll let you continue um update on that because i know a lot of so people snagged onto it and they were like fuck yeah i want to see this right and i looked at tyler and i was like dude okay fuck yeah it's a wrap so i went on legal zoom um i typed up a little uh pretty much proposal and um i got the script pretty much finalized i sent it over legal zoom and right now it is currently under copyright supervision with the library of congress and it's coming back now and i should wait like a couple more months now and and it'll be officially be solicited and i can go ahead and present it to studios and film Whoa. film companies and then we're gonna go ahead and pitch it so man dude. yeah that's that's the plan no, I, that's the I goal. love i love the creativity and i think the darkness of it yeah is yeah. a little bit it's different than Death Note or, or that, that right, whole right, concept. Like right. it's just which is it's dope. very it's very relatable. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh -huh. That's that's the it's difference. Raw. But, yes. It's raw. Mm -hmm. And that rawness is something that Yeah. It's just and I I really hope you stay as one of the cast members <laughs> because uh That's the goal, man. Yeah, Tyler, and Tyler Tyler too. Tyler has to. The yeah. reason why I said I, I it's funny you said that. Excuse me, I'm gonna be snacking because I'm a fat ass, but um um I talked to Tyler about this and I told him, I said, dude, when I told him when, by the way, not if dude, these studios will pick this up. I read the script. Uh, I pitched like the first 30 minutes to my brother and he's one of my biggest critics. He'll just tell me straight up. Yo, that's corny as fuck. Fuck that. <laughs> yo, like, nah, I'm not really digging that. Or yo, that's lit as fuck. Um, he was like, yeah, dude, I got fucking goosebumps. Like you need to do this, dude. No, nice. this is insane. Like, this is like, not just like, me telling you because you're my brother or something like that um this is not only also me telling you because i'm a fan of what you did with the trailer but this is me telling you like you could do something with this and when he told me that i was like all right shit yeah i need to all right yeah i need to, i need to just do this so i buckled down and i just got to typing and just went at it i and and um it, the rawness the realness of it um just the, the the characters they're just so organic and you'll see you'll you'll see it when when they when these studios pick this up which they will mark my fucking words dude um <laughs> yeah dude um when they do um the one thing I, I i want to do and make sure is that me and tyler still remain the main characters we have to because 
we put our past and our endurance of the things that we've been through into the performance and no one can replicate that you know what i'm saying plus that's it's, right yeah you know what i'm saying and then um plus script wise he's kind of like my half brother and in real life we've been friends for like 13 going almost 14 years now and we've done we've damn near done everything together like from being homeless to starving to um living together to celebrating to i mean everything you can think of so that's literally like my brother you know what i'm saying Right. So the chemistry would just bounce perfectly. That's too. what. That's why, and I, I saw yeah. the the same thing just mm-hmm. based on the trailer. Mm-hmm. So, and I know it's, it's awesome, man. I it's love just, it. It's make sure you guys check that out. Uh, Maniac. Is there any other ties to it? They can just put Maniac trailer. I think that's what I put in. Yeah, YouTube. Maniac trailer, Mario. I mean, whatever. I'm not like it's not blowing up yet, so you got to like get in there with uh, the tags. But Maniac trailer, Mario, um, or I mean, I'll slide you like 50 bucks if you want to put the link in the description oh yeah dude so i'll do that <laughs> that was already happening dude hell yeah bro hell yeah no i appreciate it but um yeah yeah um definitely check it out check it out for sure um it's not blowing up obviously right now i kind of don't want it to to be honest um oh, i see what you mean you know what i'm saying yeah, yeah, yeah. um i just wanted to put it out because i wanted to test it and be like yo well you had great feedback i did i did i did i was really surprised i thought i was gonna get nothing i'll be honest with you because at first, I thought people were being like, "Dude, okay, what are you doing, dude? Are you, are you a tattoo artist, or are you an uh, oh, uh, producer? Uh, yeah, actor. A producer, a fucking amateur actor? Are you? What are you doing, man? Like, are you a model? What are? You, what's what's going on?" And I'm like, "I'm fucking all of it, dude. I'm all of it." But that's, um, dude, that's so that's so what no, no, you but, have to be today, you know? Yeah, man. You have yeah. to be many other things. Honestly, why not? Why the fuck not, dude? Like, take pride in shit that you know, you're, you're, you're passionate about, you know, and I'm passionate. I just happen to be passionate about a lot of shit, fashion, clothes, um, film, cinematography, acting, producing. I like doing behind the scenes too. I like, I edited that fucking whole trailer with my boy. Like I sat Damn, there, dude. I traveled back and forth in between uh, tattoo appointments all the way to Bradenton and back. That's two hours one way. And I was wow. just back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, like hiring dog sitters to watch my dogs. Like I'm like, look, this this needs to happen, you know what I'm saying? Like I get into it. when I'm into something, I get into it. I don't stop. Like this is the shit that I like don't come in in between something that I fuck with like that. It's just not going to happen, man. Like, that's right. You know, so um yeah, that's man, I'm man. excited, dude. I'm excited. Yeah, so. we we're, we're going to just keep I not I it's inevitable in my eyes, you know. I uh, thank you. I appreciate that actually. Yeah, thank no, you. even like and I'm I'm very critical, you know, that Yeah, yeah. Tell me if it sucks, dude. Like, be no, like, hey, no, that's dude. why. Well, you know? what the, I put a comment on Facebook when you, you put that up, but yeah, I, I look at things of not just from my own point of view, but like you know, millions of uh, point of views. Yeah, and this the perception. It's like I I understand, um, and some people think uh, see the world like this too, but how are other people fucking with this right that's kind of like my my mind because i already know how i you see it i can see the art and things like that but i i also think about you know how other people are uh understanding this and are curious about this Mm -hmm. and uh it was just a, a piece that i understood to be uh just overall a quality you know uh trailer yeah and uh uh excuse me uh, a quality uh, storyline, yeah, and it's something that I I was developing my ideas on my own, you know. So that's I love, you know, how like open it was, yeah, you know. So for sure, for sure, yeah, we ca- we try to keep it transparent with yeah. everything that we do, you know. what I'm saying so, um, yeah, what you see is what you get, man. You know, like that's I, I tr- I'm trying to keep it that way, you know. I mean, because if I'm faking shit then um you're criticizing something that doesn't even exist you know and that's just not even going to help me move forward and, and build you know well, what what i'm supposed to do so um be you man stay true be you because if someone says uh you suck or something that you do sucks at least you can actually work on it and you know do something about it if you choose to by the way you don't have to but if you do then um the organic growth comes from within because it's real from the from the jump you know that's so, right take pride in your horniness man your cringe <laughs> all of it take pride 
Hell yeah, dude. Yeah. So, you know, I was thinking about uh, before you came here, um, mm-hmm. like the weight of just being in a position that you are, but what it took to get you to this place. And obviously you have face mm-hmm. tattoos, you have tattoos all over, piercings, and um, you have a creative mind. But I, I also wonder about, you know, the same way I've had similar, uh, I guess, experiences in, in other ways that create some type of chaos. We, we've we had chaos in our life and yeah. uh, being homeless mm-hmm. and things like this. Mm-hmm. You, know, you know, tell me about kind of like what you had to go through to become... The mo- this version of Mario today. Um. Well, I trauma trauma is huge. Um, a lot of trauma. Um, it's weird, man. You uh, when you are an artist, uh, I'm speaking for a lot of artists that I know, by the way, not just myself. Um, I speak for a lot of people who actually don't talk about it enough. And I feel like we need to because it will save it will save lives, man. And not necessarily meaning like it will drive them to, you know, suicide and and whatnot, um, which is heavy as is. But I mean, people's lives can be ruined just from the sheer thought of, you know, I I lost it. I lost touch with it myself. And that's something that I went through personally. Um, and I can share with a lot of other people, excuse me, um, that, uh, I grew up with for sure. Um, I won't mention any names obviously, but me specifically, I can represent who they are. So when I'm speaking right now, I'm speaking for those people as well too. Uh, cause I was not alone. Um, there are moments where I was alone, but there, there's a lot of moments that I wasn't alone and it was fucked up, man. It was, it was fucked up. Um, so tell me an experience that um, you felt like, damn dude, as far as like the, the topic of yeah. suicide. Yeah. What were those moments in time or one particular moment that, you know, you felt very close to committing, you know, an end. When you are, are an artist you feel like you have this weight on your shoulders you wake up every morning and uh or if you're some sort of creator you feel like you're in endowed or in debt to be a creative you feel like every day you're wasting time it's scary as fuck right now i feel like i'm wasting time Same. for sure uh see so yeah. you know what i'm saying like if you're a creative and you're hearing this you're gonna be like shit i know what he's talking about you feel like you're constantly running up against the clock and um Sometimes it it fucks with you, especially when you find yourself in a place that isn't beneficial to your growth. And I did that to myself, of course, but um, I was lost and I uh, did things the wrong way. I shouldn't have taken certain routes and I I did what I did. But at the same time, it made me who I am. Um, And I am very grateful for the routes that I took. But um, I mean, for example... uh, I remember it got so bad. I remember being in a uh, in a hotel. I was living in a hotel room, and one of my exes, God bless her sweetheart, um, <laughs> wherever you're at, um, she knows who I'm talking about. But um, I remember being in the hotel room, and uh, I stared at a, 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 a shower curtain rod, and I was figuring out like five different ways to just hang myself. I was like, okay, so I'm I'm this heavy. If I can make this work, let's see how sturdy this is. Um, I, I w- would this be able to hold me if I use this, or what if I use this? And once I started actually being analytical about that, I've lost my fucking mind because I never got to a point where I literally was genuinely. I'm sitting at a drive through figuring out what I want to eat. You know what I'm saying? It's literally, mm. it was so, it was so smooth in my head like that. Like, wow, oh, what do I want to eat today? I was just like looking at it. I was like, okay, how the fuck do I do this? And I'm like, what the fuck am I doing? Like, dude, what am I doing right now? Like, this is crazy. Why? This is not who I thought I was supposed to be, man. This is fucked up. You know what I'm saying? Like, I am more than this. I, I don't deserve to live a life like this and this is not cool man and i was mad at everybody around me because i was like dude i'm here and i'm thinking about 
wanting to end myself and all these other motherfuckers are just like not giving a shit how dare they you know what i'm saying and what the fuck do i know or why 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 would i call someone out like that for living their own life you know what i'm saying i was so selfish and entitled but um that's how i felt at the time i felt like dude i can't do it so someone's got to give me a break someone's got to help me out and what was crazy was it, it was all created by delusion i was posting uh trans just in transparency you know what i'm saying like i was just posting white lies and this is coming in one month be on the lookout for this and this is dropping and this is happening and there were just ideas that i wanted to produce but i never took action on them for years and years and years and years all i did was talk 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 be that guy that talks about that shit oh that dude i fuck with that dude he talks about doing this shit he's gonna do it and i never fucking did it you know <laughs> Damn, what i'm saying dude. and it was because i was always scared i was fucking scared dude um, I, I, I absolutely was just terrified of, of doing something with myself and, and becoming something that I set out to do. You want to know why it's because I was, I was, I was scared of failing. That's the number one reason why we just don't go through this shit or why I didn't go through a shit. At least I was scared to fail. So I believed everyone around me saying, yo, you're a fire ass artist. You're dope at what you do. You know, you're amazing. Da 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 da. And I was just like, no. You know, I, I believed it to a point, but, you know, it I, I it just wasn't it wasn't the full throttle like in me what I needed. You know what I'm saying? Like the, just that that push. So um, it fucked with me for a little while and uh, I, I got really depressed and gained a lot of weight. And at that time, it was just really, really dark, man, dark. I, I didn't know what I was doing. I was getting like shitty nine to five jobs, doing things that I just wouldn't see myself doing. Um so what, just, what was the what was the the moment or I guess the reasoning that you had to talk yourself out of looking at the curtain rod and telling yourself that you know I don't know this I'm think I'm thinking about this too calculated and what was the the I guess the words to yourself the thoughts that you had that you said you know what I'm not I'm not gonna do this I'm not gonna commit suicide um. I just had something to prove, man. That was that was it. I just looked in the mirror and I was like, "No, bro. No. Like I need to I I know I can there's something I can I I I was seeing all this that's happening in real time. Like I was just like I know I can create something, man. Like I know I can do something. I know I'm capable if I do push myself and actually what if I actually do try hard and give it a go like would what 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 could I do if I had the the right tools and the right people in my hands? So let me go ahead and change that. Let me start changing my environment, and let me just see what happens. If I change my fucking environment and change my ways and start you know eating healthier and start losing weight and start getting my self confidence back up, and I'm still not doing shit, then yeah, fuck it. By all means, do what you got to do. But you know what I'm saying? Um, well, at least give that a go and see what happens. You know what I'm saying? um so just what, the possibility you say, i know this is a hip <clears throat> i know this is like a heavy question go for it yeah yeah but what happened uh what would you suggest or, or recommend or advise someone that's in a dark place right now and is contemplating suicide and perhaps are looking at obstacles and, and planning in their head because i've done this in my life before too and you have all the little little details that Mm-hmm. you're like okay what if i did this and how mm-hmm. how will this mm-hmm. happen what if someone's currently going through this right now what would you tell them if they're listening to you know uh, point them in a direction where mm-hmm. they can get to that mindset that you've gotten to i um i am like very well known for saying this because i wholeheartedly believe it but believe in the fact that everything happens for a reason just fucking believe it man please just believe it if you don't believe in anything else even in yourself just believe that everything happens for a reason um whether you find out immediately or you find out five years from there are things that i still wonder to this day why the fuck they happened and then there are things in the past that have happened years ago that 
have come full circle and i'm like oh my god that's why that fucking happened dude that's crazy as fuck if that didn't happen wow. this wouldn't happen right now you know what i'm saying yeah and it's wild it's wild and it honestly is an exciting and amazing discovery because you're the author of what's happening, man. Like you did that, you know what I'm saying? That happened in your life and you're telling your story. So if you um, don't even believe in yourself, just believe that everything happens for a reason and just fuck it. Find out what happens. You know That's what I'm saying? Right. What just, you... just fuck it. Why not? What else do you got? What else, <laughs> what else you got to lose? You know what I'm saying? See what happens. Um, because nine times out of 10, when you actually find out what happens, um, you, you'll, you'll be like, wow, fuck yeah, this was worth it, you know? Um, and that one time that you're kind of disappointed, um, it's it's still just doing its job. Right. It's still doing its job. You're, it's not over yet. It's not done teaching you a lesson. So if you're a student, always be a student for the rest of your life. If you're a student, um, you got some learning to do for sure. So definitely anticipate a lot of learning, a lot of lessons, um, because you will surprise yourself. You have you have a lot of potential you you don't that you don't even realize you know what i'm saying there are things that i didn't even think would have happened in my life case in point tattooing at all dude i tapped into tattooing once or twice in like 2013 for one day it was at a party and i tattooed like some of my homeboys shitty shitty <laughs> tattoos dude so amazing brandon has this like ongoing joke oh you've been actually tattooing since 2013 not like two and a half years i'm like ha yeah but literally it was just for like w i just tapped in like one day and i was just like tattooing a couple of homies and shit and you're like dude you got to do tattoos and i'm like get the fuck out of here this is terrible <laughs> i'm not doing this and then sure enough man you know fast forward it all happens for a reason you know so well, i wanted to ask you about social media and mm -hmm. what you thought about I, we kind of touched about we touched up on this a little bit in the like intro of the episode yeah 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 about it but uh, yeah. um what's your overall like just the new age of social media and being an artist on the platform uh in general um, like, uh i guess yeah it, social media is an amazing tool for artists uh i fucking love it um, I also fucking hate it. Uh, it's pretty, uh, it's bittersweet relationship, excuse me, for sure. Um, I think honestly, uh, it's, it's yes. When utilized the right way, it's a great tool to network. And I mean, these are things everyone knows, you know what to do with social media nowadays. I mean, even the fucking 60 year old grandma knows how to <laughs> fucking network herself on social media. You know what I'm saying? She knows what gets likes and what right, doesn't, you know right. what I'm saying? what time to post and what time not to, you know what I'm saying? So, um, it's, it's out there for sure. What's the um, time to post? <laughs> <laughs> Just out of curiosity. It depends on what you're posting. But, um, <laughs> honestly, uh, it's prime time for people who want to get some high volume eyes. Um, it's usually after, uh, okay. So it's either, it's from like t Tuesday to like Friday. It's like either right before noon like right around when people like lunch? are yeah like right around lunch or so but not too early because people are still getting ready for the day and whatnot but like right around lunch or after five o'clock um which it, <laughs> that again, makes sense it makes sense right we yeah. already know um and then saturdays it's like early morning kind of because saturday people are just kind of like surfing and you'll just constantly see that shit you know this what I'm is very helpful for it's, people that it's true, really, really want to it's kind of a pattern it's kind increase. of increase i, I kind of do it on you can see the pattern on facebook if if you take a look like yeah. the days i post um i used to get the algorithm right for instagram a lot and then that shit changed like a motherfucker i also i stopped doing what i consecutively was doing you know, um at while trying to transition into other art forms and stuff like that so um that that will you'll you'll see a drop off too you know that's why i was scared to put out maniac because i was like oh it's not a tattoo you know fuck am i gonna get no likes on this and it fucking content did the opposite so that was like a rare occasion but whoa uh, yeah it was weird so um yeah you're you're you start creating an audience with what time you post people start looking forward to it subconsciously unconsciously doing things in anticipation for the things that you post um it's it's cool um the downside though to social media is you do get consumed by it and 
I saw on a critique page on Facebook for tattoos that I'm a part of, someone said, someone said, hey, I'm posting my tattoo again. Nobody got any likes on it on my personal page. <laughs> so bold. Did I do something wrong? Please critique this tattoo. And someone right underneath commented, and I was like, damn, bro. Like, this is so true. The dude said, one, never value your work based off of likes on social media. That's, you're already fucked up. No matter if it gets three likes or fucking 300, it doesn't fucking matter, man. That's, if you, you know, you think it's the shit, then it's the shit. You know what I'm saying? That's right. Um, no, I, I no. think people really need to hear that. Yeah, man, for real. Like, because there are people that are yeah. very, uh, hungry for, for likes and we, yeah. we get drive, uh, from it, you know, when there's absolutely, yeah. you know, there's, there's, uh, multiple likes happening all at once. And yeah. I think that's normal for human, human nature and things like this, but, uh, yeah, yeah. but, uh, when you have an identity toward it, mm -hmm. I think that's the the part that can be detrimental to your mental health. Prime example, uh, uh, talking detrimental. Uh, it's 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 uh, the overconsumption that leads to a fake facade, uh, a facade of um, whether it be you know. Uh, red flags or consciousness about relationships and stuff like that. I noticed like, think about this, man, like 10 years ago, people weren't posting you're a red flag if you're this, this and this, or <laughs> they don't got memes of like, yeah, you're doing this, this and this, this is what you are. Or like you're a cancer if this and you're a Virgo if this and all that, you know what I'm saying? And now it's like almost a Bible to relationships and it creates this fake Hmm. stigma against relationships there's nothing organic anymore it's like the internet told me this is how this goes and it got 13.5k likes this has got to be true you know what i'm saying which is absolute fucking bullshit you know what i'm saying because like i've met someone who's like has those tendencies or those traits that they're talking about and they're not like what the internet portrays them to be you know what i'm saying so the over connection and stimulation of Right. relatable things and social media can be good like damn bro he totally did that and like i do do that you know what i'm saying that's funny but then there's like the they take it a little too far and they do like the whole relationship thing and then you almost you almost look to the internet and others as like your psychiatrist or kind of mm. that mirror that you're trying to bounce your emotions off of you know what i'm saying so now you're you're shutting people out without even getting to know them naturally organically because the fucking internet meme that you got saved in your photo gallery is burned in your brain you know what i'm saying i it's, do it's fucking crazy man so that that's that's just not okay hey dude i'm i'm guilty of it every occasionally i'll find a funny relationship meme and i'm like okay that's kind of funny you know what i'm saying <laughs> yeah. but that's how they get you because then you can dive deep into that and all of a sudden that, the internet's your bible don't let the internet be your bible man that shit's crazy you know what i'm saying i'm that's, uh, yeah, yeah I, I totally agree with you. It's crazy. And then, I mean, uh, RIP all these musicians and stuff, but like just recently with like, you know, PNB and stuff, um, sharing locations. And so there's another downside to the social media too. You, letting everyone know your every fucking move. It's like I post things like oh, I went on a shopping spree and spent this or I did this or, you know, I, I'm taking a selfie because I'm eating here or whatever because, you know, you're just feeling it, right? But there's, you know, there's some people who... um like I used to shit post. That's what it's called, shit posting, uh, especially their emotions. And they'll just be like, I want to fucking ruin it and end it all and fuck yeah. my life. And it's a whole black screen and they're just typing and typing and going off and off and off and off. And I used to do that. I used to be a victim of that. And it's just too much. It's You're letting in people who don't matter uh, inside of what you truly feel that's hurting you. And in return, you're not going to get any reception because they're like, dude, this dude's fucking crazy. Why is he posting this? So now you feel even shittier because you're not getting any reception. So you're like, wow, I'm embarrassing myself. You know what I'm saying? Do, you, so, do people feel the embarrassment? Do you think they're aware aware to the embarrassment? Some aren't. Some aren't. I and yeah, I, used, I agree. I, I used to be one of them. Um, you you don't. You're just on a high. You know what I'm saying? Um, it's uh. I was recently called out by some female and I made a comment on one of her posts and she immediately screenshotted, posted it up, boom, boom, boom. And she got all the likes she wanted and all that. And it wasn't even anything that crazy. You know, it's just, do you want to share it? It's a uh, dude. It's I, this girl's got her ass out. You know, she's got tattoos on her ass and I comment, let me tattoo you. And that was it. 
I didn't I didn't add any emojis or anything like that. I just kind of left it at that. It That's not weird at all coming from a tattoo artist. I um in the in the <laughs> industry it comes off as like you're desperate and oh, I see. all I got was you should know better. You're better than this. You're way too talented. Oh, now all of a sudden I'm too talented. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. This is what this is what's crazy about the internet, bro. All of a sudden I'm too talented for this shit. But before when I'm posting things and I'm not saying anything i never say anything about my work the most i'll ever say is i'll call a little tiny piece like a crispy bacon piece which means i take pride in my line work that's something you should take pride in as a tattoo artist and that's something that you should boast and put in your portfolio a lot of people and clientele choose you for line work doesn't matter how much of an artist you are at all because that's going on your skin dog so I do boast about that every once in a while. That's it, though. All of a sudden now, people are like, you're, you are you, are way too talented for, for commenting like that. And I'm like, bro, shut the fuck up. Where the fuck were you, my dude? Right. Like, come on now. So it just, it's just, uh, it, it's crazy. And, and I got half the people on my side, and the other half were like, he's a monster. <laughs> he, he commented on your bare ass and... And, and, and just, and, and you were, you, you were, you were, you were unintentionally thirst trapping. And, and he said, let me tattoo you with nothing else added to that. No emojis, no thirstiness, no punctuation. And he's going to say that, like, how dare he do that? Like, and some people were like, yo, she's blessed to have you compliment her like that because you're really picky about skin. (laughs) I don't say it. My people say it. You know what I'm saying? So like, I know other artists who do this, by the way, and they don't get shit for it. But the thing is, though, there are some people on the other end who are reciprocated that need the attention, man. It's crazy as fuck. They need it. They got to have it. You know what I'm saying? Instead Mm. of just being like, yo, dog, I'm not going to lie. That look kind of desperate. Like, chill out. Like, don't do that again. I'd be like, damn i'm not gonna lie yeah. that did look kind of desperate no nah, instead you aired me out and then right, you know, right. it just... helps you reevaluate yourself yeah, man it's... it's crazy i'm like dude it wasn't even me coming off as like and look i you know if she gave me an opportunity if she felt some type of way or uncomfortable if you know she didn't like block me she immediately blocked me she didn't want to hear anything i had yeah. to say or whatever so i was like <laughs> I, you know i was kind of poking fun at it and keeping keeping the vibe <laughs> light and shit you know uh, and then you know she just blocked me and um case in point you know i i i could have been like hey you know i'm sorry if i made you feel uncomfortable but i just literally was like yo let me tattoo you you know whatever you got a bunch on you why not but it is what it is man it's we live in a world where the internet makes everybody uh live in a really fucking weird world you know what i'm saying um your world is barely existent that's going on around you in real life and the internet what's going on in your pocket in the palm of your hand is way more important you know (laughs) what i'm saying so um and unfortunately it's 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 like a double-edged sword with with the internet and social media with the career that i'm i'm currently undergoing which is tattooing um you're gonna see your ups and downs people are waiting for you to fuck up dude that's yeah. what the internet's about, man. That internet is, you know, made up of all these moving parts that it just works so peacefully in harmony and everyone's just so happy, you know. There's got to be the crazy side to it, you know. For so sure. It's it's wild, man. Social media is social media is wild, bro. It's <laughs> wild. That's all I got to say. We were talking before uh when I last time I bumped into you about racism and yeah. and I thought it was pretty odd coming from someone uh you know like where are you originally from, first of all? I'm originally from uh, Germany. Oh. Yeah, I was born yeah, in Germany. Military. Mm-hmm. Yeah, military born abroad. I was born in this town called, I'm sorry, mom, if I fuck this up. It's called Fürth. <laughs> Fürth, Germany. But it's yeah. It's pretty good. Yeah, I don't yeah, I don't know shit about Germany, really. Um, I, I, I visited there like years ago, years ago, in like 06. Um, and then, uh, you know, got fat as fuck because that's all they do there is eat. <laughs> like a lot but their food is fire so far but yeah germany um and then when i was two came here to the states um hey, wh- which state massachusetts specifically you know? gotcha. when you're born abroad you call the usa the states it's like a thing it's yeah yeah f- and puerto rico is like that yeah too. yeah oh the states you know what i'm saying so <laughs> that's what i that's what i say too um so yeah massachusetts uh grew up there until i was about like 18 or so and then uh yeah migrated here in florida man uh in 2011 so spent about like 16 17 years in boston and then when i went off to college then that was a shit show and then (laughs) came here to florida and then 
that was it for that. Um, but yeah, uh, it was, uh, yeah, it was a cool experience. I mean, I, I don't really remember it. I was only two years old when I moved. So, but yeah, Germany, man. And so, and what's your background? I'm German, Turkish, and Puerto Rican. Gotcha. Yeah. So, and like what, growing up in school, did you have a diverse crowd? Um, uh, Growing up in Massachusetts was really, really interesting. Um, and 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 in Massachusetts, uh, obviously, it's part of New England. New England's a, just a big melting pot, man, of immigrants. So you know, you you kind of just you're you're all just one in, in in the same. You don't really. I mean, I'm gonna be real with you. Okay, I I personally felt like that. I never really had to grow up dealing with racism because I grew up around so many different cultures and races and stuff like that we're all just all you know friends we're all homies you know i'm saying i hung out with the white kids and then at some days i hung out with like the puerto rican spanish dominican kids then sometimes the asian kids and lowell and shit like um just like we all just kind of vibed you know i'm saying but it's crazy because so there was segregation uh when it came to like living quarters and classism with race in massachusetts growing up but here in Florida, I experienced the most racism, but I don't really experience like segregation, though. Everyone's all living within each other, scattered. You know right. what I'm saying? I never really, I don't really get that vibe. Like, and if there is a vibe, like, go to Massachusetts. It's fucking crazy. Lowell's Asians, <laughs> fucking Lawrence's Dominicans and Puerto Ricans. You know what I'm saying? Haverhill, Bradford, there's like more Puerto Ricans are just, it's just, it's crazy. Like, there's specific races that just, hang out and just end up migrating and just chilling out in these certain areas but it's not because you know people banish them to these areas or there was you know uh, controversy and stuff like that it's just it's just how it goes i don't know it's just that area you know so um and then when when did you so you the first time you experienced racism was in florida tell me about that dude yeah i i won't say where at um but it was here in, in winter haven um and i i worked for a company um, that washes cars and, uh, I was a, 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 a detailer and I, um, I remember, uh, detailing a car one day and I pull the car out front around to, to, you know, after the car gets serviced and, you know, the servicer hands the client their keys and, okay, you're all set. Good to go. We got you a free car wash too on top of it. And I, 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 I pull the car up, whatever. It wasn't even fancy. It wasn't even fancy. Nothing crazy. I pull up and, uh, I grab the keys out, you know, just, I remember this vividly walking out of the car, doing my thing, almost time to get out of work. And, uh, I dropped the keys off to the servicer, the client's sitting right there. Usually I'm just like, Hey, you know, um, all set, good to go. And then I walk back to the garage. I'm like mid walking back to the garage and there's a wall behind the servicer's office there. And I just hear the guy, give me those keys. And he gets up and he's like, Oh, hell no. And I'm like, what the fuck? And I'm like, what do you mean? Hell no. So I'm, I just like look over real quick and I stand behind the wall and I'm just like kind of curious and nosy. And my boss is wondering where the hell I'm at. I usually just book it right back and then go to the next one. He's kind of walking his way up and he's noticing I'm looking over and he's just like, I f- am I allowed to? Yeah. You can- okay. Okay. All right. Cool. Cause I'm just going to let it hang out. But if you got to bleep it out, you can, but no, no, you, you know, he walks shit. up, to, he walks up to the car and uh, he's like, I fucking knew it. I, I knew it. I knew it. I, this goddamn spick, he stole my quarters. I knew it. And I'm like, what the fuck, wow. dude? I'm like, yo, and it's just this angry old white dude. And he's like, he stole all my, that Mexican stole my quarters. He's going to go to that fucking goddamn border. I know he's going to do something with it. Just saying some like crazy, stupid shit that just wow. doesn't even make any sense. You know what I'm saying? And I'm just standing there and I'm like, what the fuck bro and my boss is like chill chill i was heated i was like bro what the fuck like i was ready to just walk and be like yo what did you what's what's good bro like what, what's your problem you know what i'm saying because like yeah. i never experienced that and that got me heated and i never heard that word hit me like that in, in about towards me you know right. what i'm saying so i was like oh shit dude that was fucking crazy that was like saying the word cunt cunt's yeah. a strong word you know what yeah, I'm saying? yeah i don't even really even like to use that word but that's like that's like slices <laughs> so that word i was like what the hell dude and then he 
he added those you know uh those other race racial slurs and 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 putting me in and categorizing me and all this shit i'm not even mexican and it was just crazy and um i that was the first time i experienced it and he was pissed as fuck pissed as fuck when he found those quarters oh, i i organized man. everything for him i just put him in a different spot that was it i just or i, I had to get the quarters out of his cup holder, clean the cup holder and shit, and then put it, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So That's I just organized amazing, it dude. and he found it and he was still, ah, you know, cause they're embarrassed and yeah, shit or whatever, yeah. but you know, and then he was just still pissed off and he was, and, and he ended it by saying, I don't ever want someone looking like him to touch my car again, or I'm not coming here. And I'm like, what the fuck? Are you serious right now? Like, that's wild. What the fuck does that have to do with it's just and it's crazy because it's you know what i'm saying there's not you can't right. you can't shake that shit to some no. people it's crazy i don't and that's the thing like and, and my one of my buddies in the back he's a mechanic and he was like hey man and he's um <laughs> he, he was he's he's black and then we got some spanish guys and then we had some asian guys and he's like hey man next time we get that guy's car bro all all of us should just pack in that car and just come out of that car like a clown <laughs> car and he's just seen all the different races popping out you know, and like just having a fucking heart attack, like going crazy. But um, I, I, I was like, dude, I can't. My boss was like, look, I can't really speak on that. Um, if you need to talk to someone, you can. Uh, but are you OK? Da, 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 I'm sorry. Da, da. I'm like, yeah, I'm straight, bro. And like I talked about it with my friends and stuff afterwards. And we were just talking about like, I can't believe that. Fast forward a couple years. And then the 2020 stuff happened. And uh, I remember getting slammed for uh, saying that. I, I didn't grow up with racism mm -hmm. or I was oblivious to it. And people were like, how could you say something so arrogant? How dare you? Da, 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 da. It is everywhere. And I'm like, I'm sure it is shit. <laughs> like I know it is. Like, I was I, unaware. Dude. Yeah. I just don't know where the fuck it's at because <laughs> at least I, and I said growing up because when I grew up, I never personally experienced it. I never did. I never did. I never saw it. You know what I'm saying? It's a thing. It's not, and it's not like you're blind to it or anything. It's just, um, or, you know, you're, you're, you're not susceptible. It's, it's just, you know, you, 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 you see it and you don't. And, uh, it's something that's that's really bothersome that like still exists to me. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Like it's just it's it's weird, man. And let's just like get rid of the 2020 vibe for a second too, because a lot of people do that. They affiliate with just oh yeah, I know in 2020 that shit was crazy. And I'm like no no no, bro. I'm talking about like in general. You know what I'm saying? Like it's, right. And I I got more experiences that have happened ever since that first one. That first one happened in 2014, and now it's 2020. I've had about six more experiences personally with racism, um, wow. and it's it's wild, dude. It's why it's very uncomfortable. It's weird, um, and it's just it's sad that it still exists. You know, it's yeah. That it's. I feel like just based just on the generations, this will fade out in the next like ten for years. Sure, you know, for sure. as we know, but it it's just not popular anymore. <laughs> yeah, you know what yeah, I mean. So yeah. it's What's now crazy it's very. Is you use that word popular that's crazy you know it's not it's like it was like a trend yeah at yeah. some point you know what i'm saying it, it was well it was a uh, for many years the way of living and, yeah. and then now it's just now if anybody knows like a race is like dude are you, for real are mm -hmm. you serious mm -hmm. you know so that's why i don't put too much attention to it you oh, know, at all not. because yeah. it's just you know, the more we speak about this the more it's going to exist yeah because the realistic the real um uh, the reality of it is that it's not as common as it once was. For so sure. this is progression. Sure. So the reason why I wanted to bring it up, though, and I'll close off on this and we can um, move on. But um, uh, the reason why I wanted to bring it up in the first place is because, um, and this is not being arrogant towards uh, racism, and I'm not saying this compares to racism um, because I know actions and events that, you know, involve racism were very devastating and terrible. Um, but it's weird because people who it, it's still happening um but it's it's going away it's crazy but people with tattoos experience some sort of mm. treatment or attention that's vaguely similar to like how people used to treat you know um other people based upon their race which is they just look at them and they see them different and 
their perception of them is automatically different. It's prejudice. Yeah, it's prejudice. Uh, yeah, yeah. It's no, prejudice. I totally see it like you know that. what I'm saying. It's and it, that's what I'm saying. I'm trying to thoroughly just to, to articulate this because people would be like, "Dude, shut the fuck up. This is not the same." At all. I'm not saying it's the same, but those 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 vibes and those energies. Oh, well, here I'll give you a personal story. I mean, sure, a, yeah. a personal from from my point of view is mm-hmm. is that. If I don't open my mouth, you know, people will assume, like, I have tattoos so yeah, on yeah. both of my arms, but uh, if I didn't have a nice smile <laughs> and, I, and I, I didn't talk like I, you know, like an intellect sometimes and mm-hmm. things like this, you know, there's a lot of uh, just prejudice that people will just look at me and, and put me in a category. Right. You know, but just based on looking at me, oh, look at that fucking, you know, Puerto Rican. Yeah. You know, he looks yeah. kind of like, he looks like he's been into some shit and, yeah. and things like that. But that, that definitely exists. Yeah. And, and I, and I think, you know, there's some relatableness. There's, there's utility to it. There's yeah. uh positive they can, they parts. They intertwine. They can intertwine. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And, and I think it's kind of like, uh it's kind of it's beautiful in a sense because when anyone speaks to you 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 have a good heart mm-hmm. you know the same um like myself and so it doesn't all of the physical you know appearance yeah. is very irrelevant right it, you know so yeah. and that's why i'll have like very conservative conservative older ladies you know look at me and i can see their eyes yeah you know the yeah. judgment but what do you get from older ladies when they see you at first? Like, what do you what do you experience? Like, what what, what are the top reactions they? Um, they I think it's well. A lot of times, it's well, my customer service is like the best in this town. I'm not bragging, but it is. Man, talk your <laughs> shit. Talk it up, baby. Yeah. But uh, um, so you know that that's for starters is, is customer service. But a lot of times, like I understand like uh, uh, body language and just eye contact and. I can see mm-hmm. the judgments of just oh like he's he looks a little bit on on easy based on just the tattoos and things like that and he has long hair and he looks kind of kind of like a hippie yeah. what, whatever so they have some yeah. and then plus I'm around pipes and I'm like everything <laughs> that you, you should he's be a stoner <laughs> god damn it yeah but what's what the beauty in it is that th- that happens sometimes but uh, and it can happen a lot of times that this isn't in their heads yeah. but when I open up and speak with them and you can start to see this diminish yeah and yeah. that i always because it has it does nothing for me but it does so much to them that they can recognize yeah uh you you can't judge a book by its cover Absolutely you know to keep not. it short yeah you know and i think that's the beauty of it is communication is is very key oh for sure and just and to I, diminish dude, that yeah yeah and i'll, I'll throw it in there and even I'll, I'll even throw it at their face i was like i, I know i look like uh i have tattoos and shit like that <laughs> yeah and some older people will say like what you know conservative they're like yeah what made you get all these tattoos yeah, you know yeah, things like yeah. that because because they recognize i'm a nice guy yeah they're like yeah. what kind of damage this motherfucker has yeah yeah that compelled them to get all these tattoos exactly and, and i always have the same answer you know it's just like um i don't know like i i felt like it was always me you know and um and uh, you know whatever that means to you is irrelevant mm-hmm. and and i i'm very forward with people I, yeah I don't give transparency a shit about that. is key man you know yeah. so and i know people can have their and i'm talking to them yeah about ideas that are in their head yeah yeah <laughs> so i mean like and i know people you know will judge this and stuff like that and yeah, yeah, I know yeah. you're <laughs> the fucking person that, <laughs> that i'm meme, talking to just, <laughs> yeah, I don't, yeah, but yeah, uh i let don't. them know yeah I, I basically let them know that, yeah. you know, uh, sometimes it's you just have to speak with someone to really understand what, where their heart's at. Yeah. Because the heart is, is really truly what it where is. someone is yeah. in, in life. And, and you know, I, I tell a lot of customers this. They're, people used to judge me on the pipes and yeah. older ladies and, you know, be afraid. And, and then yeah. I would, they're like, I just, I've never been into this just pot smoking and stuff like that and and they were like you know i went into the cannabis industry a couple of years ago and i was there for two and a half years and yeah um uh, learning that it's like i went in there understanding all the biasisms and and the stigma and all those things yeah so but i wanted to see the medicinal properties and benefits so i was a little hesitant too and it's in, inspect in uh skeptical too mm-hmm. Um, but when I educated and I, and I was responsible for, you know, 
helping people get from 17 medications to three. And I've helped, you know, dozens, oh, wow. yeah. dozens, dozens of patients uh, get off pharmaceuticals and helping them with several ailments, including children on the spectrum and epileptic seizures and, and For sure. whatnot. And so I, I let them know this. Yeah. And to see the transition in their eyes is just like, wow. And yeah. I always say, I always related to them like, yeah, when I'm helping someone that's seven years old, the age that I know that they are. Yeah. And helping them with pain because I can feel the pain and right. I can empathize with it. And to help them get in a better position, it's so incredible. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I had a lot of ideas about cannabis of just like it's just a party, but there's some true benefits. Oh, absolutely. And yeah. the, the ending of that is uh, what's funny is that these people that started like this now buy pipes for me. Oh, see? So there it's just go. that yeah. beautiful moment where That's it's what just it is. like That's all it takes. It was know? never it's, about my opinions or yeah. anything about this, it's, you know? It's funny because I, uh, uh, and then we'll move on. But I, I, my, my interactions with older, older uh, people uh, with with my appearance, it's, I, I they see me. I have a <laughs> RBF. I have a resting bitch face. They see me and they're like, "Fuck no, dude!" And then I'll just go ahead and open the door for them, and oh. then they'll just they'll be, oh, "Thank you." And I'm like, and I open my mouth and I'm like, "Yeah, sure, no problem." And they're like, "What the fuck?" And I'm like, the surprise. Yeah, the surprise. You hit them and they're like, oh shit. So it all, it, all it really takes is just one simple act or just, you know, actually, like you said, communication. You know what I'm saying? Like we communicate and throw these things at each other in such harmful ways. You know, the benefits <clears throat> of doing them in positive ways can really just change an outlook on anybody. You know what I'm saying? So That's right. I, I love it, man. I love it. That's dope. So wh- what was your experience like sometimes people can associate mm-hmm. you know a lot of tattoos not just a tattoo or two but when you have sleeves and things like this mm-hmm. there's a part of life that uh you're you've fooled around with drugs in your time right for a lot of people right that have a lot of tattoos so uh, do you have any experience with drugs dude i have multiple experiences with drugs way too many um I don't do them anymore um, because of my experiences. Uh, and, you know, everyone's got that one bad fucking trip, man. <laughs> that was fucking crazy. But this was more than a bad trip, man. This was, I'll never forget this shit. And my friends who know this story, they'll never forget it, I'm sure, too. But it was devastating, man. There's this, uh, there, there's, there's like, there's knockoffs of other drugs and things that you can take. And there's a knockoff of acid. Um, and it's got properties that, uh, are simil- similar to uh, acid trip, but they're very harmful to your body. And some people can have different reactions to those chemicals that are in there. And um, yeah, I experienced that. Unfortunately, I'm not going to really get into like names and the names of what I took and stuff like that. Cause um, I don't want to put people shit out there, but um, <laughs> it was, uh, uh, yeah, I, I went and gulp, took that shit down and uh, um you know, I just pressed it under my gums and, um, it was supposed to be acid and it wasn't okay. Let's just leave it at that. And, it, um, <laughs> this is the point where I was like, Oh shit, dude. Like I'm kind of done with drugs at the time. I was super hooked on Molly. I loved ecstasy, man. Ecstasy was the shit. I would do it in many different forms. And it was just, it was huge back then. Like in 2013, 2014, it was just like popping up in like rap and hip hop culture too. Yeah, so yeah. like how, perks are now and stuff like that and like just taking popping pills and stuff it was huge back then to just be on like some type of ecstasy or something so you know i was just getting off that stuff and then uh the acid trip um that changed my life uh i was tripping for acid trip that changed my life i I was tripping for about 36 hours that's exhausting holy shit dude yeah it's exhausting because i was uneducated on how much i should take and then i was just fucking slamming orange juice too while i was taking it yeah so it was just sending that straight to my fucking brain like no tomorrow it was bad um basically uh i was i I was it was on one of my many ventures with some of my buddies back uh when we were just kind of couch surfing and and hopping around being homeless and just being idiots and uh yeah i was pretty lost so i looked to drugs um for answers and people still do that to this day and i think it's probably the dumbest thing you could do honestly i i i think it can help direct you 
um, or redirect you or guide you into an atmosphere and environment and a mindset that you need to be to get answers, but they're right. not answers. You know what I'm saying? I treated them like this is what I need to be me, Mario. And mm. that was not okay. So I'm taking this shit down and I'm like, let's go, baby. Work your magic. I got to <laughs> experience something. And it was a fucking nightmare, man. Um, when you uh, have demons living inside of you and just a bad aura and, and things that are weighing you down um, and you're, you're tripping, you kind of have this fucking crazy evil mirror in front of you that just gets reflected and you experience wow. yeah. a lot of stuff so i mean yeah um and uh yeah let's see here i i crawling on the floor for about six hours because i couldn't feel my legs i felt like i was dying um you know just uh throwing up profusely because my my mind and my body were not adjusted in the same so my mind was like yo you're coming to and this doesn't feel right but my body was not there so oh God, it's like dude. so imagine like knowing you're stuck in a glass case and you're so fucking high that like you you almost break through that fourth wall and like you realize yo i'm super high i'm right there i'm looking at myself all the way down there i'm so fucking high and this does not feel good at all and i need this to end right now but it's not it's not going anywhere so you're just anxiety's kicking in you're rejecting all this shit you're trying to throw up you're fucked that's up that's a dude. nightmare dude it's a nightmare it's a fucking nightmare dude i remember like ending that night off where i could see the sun coming up and i didn't sleep at all and I was Nat Geo was on the TV in the room that I was at, and it was about like immigrants from Mexico escaping into the United States. And I was so relieved that like I was coming to that like I started crying and empathizing with these wow. these immigrants on the TV. That's like it was beautiful. fucking crazy. I was like, what the fuck is happening right now? And th that's what usually people. And I know it sounds silly and crazy, but <laughs> it's just like it's it's called. Not to some people that yeah, tripped already, dude. It's fucking crazy, but um, it's called an ego trip, man. You get an ego trip too, so you you think you're fucking high and mighty, and then you get something like that that knocks you off your ass. You know what I'm saying? And um, I mean, a, a lot of weird shit happened after that too. Like the following days, trying to recover because your body's done, you're exhausted. You know what I'm saying? Um, I remember going to a basketball court the morning of. I was supposed to go to the hospital. I didn't decide to go, and um, my boys that were with me were like, they were good. They were knocked out of sleep. I was alone by myself at night while this was happening, and um, we go play basketball, but I can't physically do anything. So I'm sitting on the bench and I'm just drained. I'm fucking exhausted. And this guy that decided to spot and come in and play the games with the guys, he comes up to me. He's like, Hey man, um, we've been just playing some games. I've been watching you, bro. And, um, I don't really know you, but something's telling me that, uh, that you're going to be okay. I don't know why, but I just need to tell you that you j you're going to be okay. Whatever you're going through, I something's urging me to tell you, please, please understand that you're going to be okay. And he just like kind of gave me a side hug and he was like, have a good day, bro. And just walked away. Wow. And I was like, what the fuck, dude? Like, what the hell is going on right now? And it, uh, yeah, sure. That's, you know, I, you don't want to call that chance, but that is, that was weird, man. There was just, a, there was a lot of instances that happened that, you know, changed my uh, view and perspective on drugs, man, like heavy, you know, That's, uh, holy it, shit, it's dude. crazy, bro. It's crazy. I mean, you can keep you can keep going deeper and deeper. I've had multiple and many experiences with drugs. And so is everyone else. You know, you can make a fucking podcast just out of that. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but um, yeah, dude. Uh, and then, you know, I, I, I slowly kept tapping in and out of drugs after that. And then I slowly just stopped, you know, with physical health and 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 just mental headspace that i wanted you know i just I, I like to be in tune and tap in with myself wholeheartedly not saying i i i, I disregard or, or i don't pay no mind or have respect for people that do drugs i don't give a shit that shit's whatever you know it's whatever it is um your your escape but um i personally just i don't i don't i don't do it anymore man because i wasn't me i was i was searching like i said for that facade and I was doing it for the wrong reasons. I wasn't doing it because I was trying to have fun. You know right. what I'm saying? And uh, I, I, uh, I think I ruined it for myself. <laughs> you kind of ruin it for <laughs> maybe yourself. That's a, maybe that's a good thing. Yeah, maybe it for is. You. you know what I'm saying? So there are people who uh, have an addictive personality and who don't um, 
maybe I, I would have tapped into like an addictive side that I didn't know. You know what I'm saying? Because I, I would pick up and drop drugs and like certain oh, substances wow. like it was nothing. So um, my physical health was like, yeah, yeah, actually, you can't do that anymore. You know what I'm saying? You got to you got to keep going, man, and, and just just stay sober and just and, and know what's good for you, you know. So um, I'm just a, yeah. I'm just a boring ass dude now. So. <laughs> but, man. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's weird, man. That's weird. And it's hard in the town where people that's, again, full circle, small town, you know, a lot of people that's what else is there to do, man? You know right. what I'm saying? And you're just trying to stay out of that life. Yeah, but man. It's around you. It's 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 hard, especially when you're in a waiting period now where you just want to wait it out because you're waiting for certain timelines to happen and to pull through. Um, now I'm just kind of chilling and, 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 and enjoying things and. It's hard because you get all these temptations and you get like this boredom striking and, and all that. Um, so it's it's interesting, man. It's it's interesting. I don't know. Yeah, dude. Yeah, I I'd love to do this again. I I'd, I'd like uh to do yeah. us, like a uh, yeah something we can expand on some other ideas. Yeah, for sure, man. Uh, tell everybody where they can find you uh, on your Instagram, Facebook, all those things, your handles. Um. So yeah, Facebook, uh, I don't know how to plug Facebook, but Mario Rodriguez, um, hopefully we'll leave some links or something. Sure, absolutely. Um, and, uh, and if somebody wanted to book you is it for yeah, any tattoo artist, um, what would they, yeah, how would they reach you? Currently, I'm at Aces Inc. in uh, Winter Haven, um, right downtown on uh, 6th Street, and uh, right across from the Wendy's on 17 there, and uh yeah, you can you can just stop in anytime you want. Um, uh, Tuesday through Saturday, man. I'm I'm usually there almost every day. Uh, you can just come in and hang out and and uh, and and just kick it with us. I mean, we are uh, three years in a row now, best tattoo shop in Central Florida. Fuck yeah! So um, we we like to take care of our people, and that's because we we do care about what we do. And uh, you brag about it, we gotta brag about it too. Our customer service is. Uh, it's there. We do have our busy days, you know what I'm saying, where we're just kind of locked in and it is hard for us as artists to greet every single person in the door. But, you know, we try our best for sure and try to um, excel in, in, in this field. You know what I'm saying? We try to be the best of the best. And uh, if you want the best of the best when it comes to art, um, and this is my personal opinion and I'll stick by it, I think uh, it's where we're at so hell yeah, yeah man, man. Yeah. mario thank you so much for thank doing you, this and bro. sitting down appreciate i appreciate you, your bro. time here yeah man we gotta do it again dude like oh I, yeah dude we'll, we'll I, have uh, uh yeah it if you want to bring uh maybe tyler on or some someone yeah, else man. And, yeah well, brandon yeah, yeah that'd brandon, be fucking that'd be awesome dope. yeah that'd be dope you know we can do the next episode we'll do like a brandon and, okay cool and yeah yeah cool mario. i told tyler about it and tyler would be down too nice he, he's he's all the way in sarasota though so it's kind of right. hard so we gotta figure that we'll, out but we'll figure brandon, it out we'll, brandon, we'll definitely sure. get that done and i'll wear something um less heavy <laughs> so i try to look good for you bro i don't know if i succeed, no man but, dude i fucking love yeah, the, the, the yeah. turtle neck you gave me like a real <laughs> like hipster steve jobs yeah man I, I was like fuck yeah first day on set with euphoria um let's fucking run it let's do it and it, it was a success i'm sorry i raided your fridge thank you for no being no a, dude not it's it's open for any uh, guests so a gracious host this guy's you're you're awesome man you're <laughs> thank you, dude. you're you're incredible and i think what you're doing is super dope by the way uh we'll end it with with that being said because uh um, there is a lot more I want to talk about, and there's a lot more that people wanted me to talk about for them, um, and, and uh, uh, you know, that don't want to hop on this or, you know, to, don't have access to something like this. And I think there's a lot of things that um, we can go over that a lot of people can benefit from for sure. So Absolutely. Um, and I'm open for it. If somebody can do sit it. down and conversate and, yeah. or they can facilitate it through you, yeah. you know, like... Yeah, I'm definitely down for I that. I got guests for you too, dog. I'll bring oh, them on. We'll, yeah, we'll threesome this shit and have Hell a yeah. blast, bro. Thank Hell you, yeah. dude. You Thank can you, catch So Selfish Podcast on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and YouTube. And you can follow my Instagram at So Selfish Podcast. Thank you all for <laughs> uh, sticking in. This is a long episode. Uh, there'll be some timestamps. Thank you, everybody, for joining. Uh, we have another guest coming uh, pretty soon. And, uh, We'll see you next time here. Thank you. Appreciate it.
<laughs> oh, <laughs> I'm yeah, so bro. fucking tired. <laughs> Good shit, bro. Yeah, dude. Good shit. Damn, man. You're now listening. I'll say flats. Okay, my man. Yeah. All right. Good shit. Good shit. That's the only answer, by the way. It's flats. Okay. <laughs>